Billiards fans checking in from around the globe. This is the world's largest pool tournament. Behind me, well, there's over 500 entrances in each tournament. Nine ball, banks, and one pocket. In front of me, it's the Diamond Bigfoot 10 ball challenge. This is the Derby City Classic and the 24th annual. Have you guys enjoyed the world-class pool so far? It has been incredible. We started with 16 of the greatest players on the planet, and now we're down to round two. We only have eight left, and only one can move into the final four to face Shane Van Boning for a chance to go to the championship. It's time to meet the players. First up, he's a Music City Open champion, the U.S. One Open One Pocket champion, and the Bigfoot Tin Ball champion. Sponsored by Predator, Bogies in Houston, and Havoc Productions from Semboanga, Philippines. The the Superman. Make some noise for Roberto Gomez. His opponent is a world nine ball champion, 2022 Bigfoot International Open champion, and the 2022 all around Derby City champion. Sponsored by Qtex, Hex.com, Tom, Diamond, and Jam Up Apparel. Please make some noise from Moscow, Russia, Fedor Gorst. Ricky Bryant is our referee and sending it up to Mark Wilson in the AccuStats Skybox. Welcome to the 24th Derby City and the 10th Annual Bigfoot Challenge. I'm Mark Wilson. Alongside me, Jeremy Jones. Glad to have you here, Double J. Glad to be here, Mark. And uh, another fine match coming to you from the Bigfoot Challenge. Fetter Gorst and Roberto Gomez. Roberto, 44. 42. For, 42. Uh, 44. I, th I think he was born in 78. I okay. Think, so. 44 and 22 then. 22, yeah. Yeah, interesting story of Roberto's career. In 2007, he made the World Nine Ball Championship final. First qualifier to ever do that, by the way. Back then, they had a huge qualifier. Actually, usually two of them at the location of where the event was the mm -hmm. week prior to the event. And it looked like the qualifier was just as tough as the tournament is what it yeah. seemed like. You know, a couple hundred players fighting for two spots. Uh, and he got one of those and went on to lose the final to Daryl Peach. And then kind of kind of like didn't see him much for a few years on the professional scene. And now has made a huge mark in America the last probably about eight years. Well, he has all the tools, all the shots. He's won the lag. He'll be breaking here. Race to 11. Oh, got some top spin on there. Yeah. And, you know, like most of the guys he's going to play in any event, we'd consider Feder a, a favorite here. Um, you could pick out a few different categories in the game, but I think the break shot itself is probably the biggest separation between the two guys. You know, or like you said, Roberto, very capable, has all the shots understands the game and he's improved his break but we'll see Fetter breaking game number two and just remember what this one looked like compared to what we see in game number two and we talked about the other day when you don't get the timing right you know how all the balls almost can end up on one side of the table a couple days ago I think it was day yeah. one we had one of those and it just happens in 10 balls sometimes he's got a piece here a little worried about the five Got to overcut the one by the seven and run the cue ball. Well, he's cueing a little downward, Mark. <clears throat> no. Yeah, he's cueing a little downward. Yeah, he downward. is. He's doing something. Maybe he can stun it. Maybe he's, Maybe banking. he's banking it long rail. Oh, okay. He had to spin it, he felt like, not only to get the throw on the one, but he didn't think he could naturally go by the five. So he tried to come inside the five, kind of at the four, two rails, something like that. Big stretch here. Going to need the bridge, I think. Yeah. yeah, and he's going to have to use some contact on the cue ball with either the nine or the three, the nine preferably. Could go into the six with outside, but that's touchy. Might make the nine on the side as well. Oh, he went by it, and that's going to be an issue. He had it so clean, the cue ball retained more speed than he was anticipating. Yeah, and for some reason, that little inside English on that thin cut, especially with the bridge, it seems like to me, 
it seems like how you want to hit the ball. It's like a comfortable way to hit that cut shot. All right, a hit here could go a long ways. Very nice, legal hit. Did not leave much of an offensive shot. Now, Federer, of course, him evaluating is some of his strongest, the strongest part of his game. I talked about him just because I've watched him so, so much. Um, he really sticks to his patterns where he can make a lot of those medium strokes. Uh, you'll see it a lot throughout the match. Unless something calls for it otherwise. Nice touch here. He left a little sliver of the two maybe. We'll see. He's absolutely a fan favorite because he's always so clean and bright, uh, bright eyed, and then hard working, and he possesses everything that's endearing about the best part of our sport. And then so young and youthful. Yeah, and he's really just a great guy as well. Always, never really negative towards anyone or humble or himself too too often. Um, just kind of plays the game, and, and, and it's just. A really unique combination of things this guy possesses. He's endearing for me because he makes the sport look good the way it should look. And uh, I'm proud to be associated with him and to have him in our sport. And it looks like he's got to go. Is he going inside the 3-6 with like a natural? Or is he going left of the 3 with some spin? Okay, no, no right English on this one. Just straight high. Wow, cut it inside. <laughs> Try that again. He does have a pocket for the three. He does have a shot. And the good thing for him is the five's over the side, so if he has to run the ball and play some kind of short side position on the four, the five's not too difficult. Now he's got a heavy angle going away from the four mark. Right, so the, the five also kind of semi-protects the cue ball from going in the side pocket. So if he mishit this, you don't have to worry as much about the scratch. Um, is he going above the eight here? I think he's trying to, like, two rails above oh, the eight? Like oh, that? yeah. I didn't think he was doing that. I thought he was going past the five. So. Yeah. Well, he fell well short of where he was hoping to be. Well, the thing was he had to get the draw on the ball, kind of, in a, in a kind of a funny manner to go above the eight. You know, it's kind of weird. Right. It's kind of a, uh, you wouldn't say a guidey stroke, but it kind of kills it on its own. You can bank to a half a pocket over here. It's going to be hard for him to pass on this, I'll tell you. Again, one of those that when it's laying nice, they'll certainly gamble. Well, he decided not to behind the eight. Minimizing unforced errors. He wasn't giving away a cheap win in this first rack. Have to commend him. That was a good decision. And it doesn't mean he's going to win the rack from the safety, but it does give him the greatest likelihood to get back to the table one more time, and that's all the safety's for. Oh, he's going past the side, huh? <clears throat> wow. I thought he would go before the side, spinning into this ball kind of medium. Yeah, you can scratch off the back of the four doing this. Yeah. And you might the make six, the six. Maybe no. flip the snooker. Yeah, I think he cut him off the offensive shot. Just barely, and put this in a treacherous spot. Yeah. Seeing as how the six is hanging, kind of like, where do you place the four? Well, you bank the four on the six. Yeah, you mm. might be right. <laughs> uh, you might be right. He may really fire at this. Uh, if he goes cross corner cutting it, he could fluke the nine in uh, with the cue ball. There's a lot of things can happen here. And I think you're absolutely right, Mark. He's got to go. Big cut on the four. Oh, safety. Yeah. Now that's that maximum backspin, minimum speed, and to gauge that uh, Separation. equally, boy, it's tough to hit that ball. You have to play a lot of pool. That's one of those in-between strokes. Wow. Well, I'll this, tell you, he can cue the ball nicely, Mark, with a big nine ball here. Yeah. Uh, hard not to bank at this one as well. And I think at times Roberto's got to look to take a few things away from Fetter in this match, you know, to overcome maybe being a little bit of an underdog. 
didn't get the hit there. He missed the mark by some piece, hitting it wide of the nine. Mm hmm. You'd rather go long because you can still clatter off the nine and make Absolutely, that ball. Absolutely, yeah. Missing it short is like leaving your putt short. Jerry Bryce has said 99% of putts that are short never go in. Yeah, I know all about that. I've done that for <laughs> a few okay. dollars. I did it one time from about three and a half feet. And it wasn't for like a, a $10 skins either. It was a. No wonder I didn't get to the hole. It was worth a pretty good little number, Mark. <laughs> <laughs> relegated you to the commentary booth to yeah. heal up. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's a lot more fun to talk about that that putt I left short from three feet. Uh, you know, the first year after it happened, I didn't want to talk about it too much. <laughs> and now Fetter Gorst in a great position. You and I talked about this in between or before the first match. You know, it's I think it was about Jason Shaw is what it was and how grinding out extra games is really, you know, the pro level. Yeah. They're so incredible, but that's the real difference I see. Oh, okay. Not something you'll see him do very, very often with just two balls on the table. But hard to fault. Game one appears to be headed the Gorse direction. And I would guess the break we're going to see is where he doesn't back off. He he possesses several different types of breaks for nine ball, ten ball. You know, if he did, and now one nothing to Gorst. But uh, I like it, uh, especially on the ten footer. To me, is is when the guys they have this big break they don't back off that's what we saw in the first match probably unloaded on the rack as much as anyone right I mean even Shane uh, yeah. that didn't really unload as, as much as Fetter and something about that break shot when you are hitting them like that it's like that uh, perfect amount of adrenaline for a match seems like He'll use a little longer bridge usually when he's unloading on them. You stick almost all the way to the middle of the table. But then he gets it flat, so it's not bouncing down there. You know, he's got yeah, that little yeah, angle. Yeah, yeah, then yeah. on the last stroke, he gets it flat. Yeah, he gets it flat, and then it's the square hit that makes it bounce. It's not the angle of the cue stick. That's why he gets so much energy into the rack because the cue's the cue mass is fairly level going through impact, right? Yeah. Or like a Sky Woodward. Who really just keeps his angle. He gets a lot of pop on the ball, but he doesn't get near the action because there's not as much power going through the rack. Still effective. It's his own type of break, Skylar's, but And that's what I thought was the biggest difference between Federer <clears throat> and Gomez. There are differences, of course, but I think the break is the biggest. Just slow draw this out. It's got a nice gap between uh, the 8 and 10 to draw back for the 5. Kind of where the cue ball's at now. And if you want a good drill, that is a good drill. Kind of, you know, how often that comes up. Oh, I'd love to have the cue ball right here for my next shot yeah. where I'm at now. And probably one rail between the 8 and 10. I don't see any point to pull the cue ball. You're perfect on the line you want, just one rail. By going straight, well, he didn't. But well, he's so good at the stun, he likes it a lot, right? But but you're coming more across your position zone if your speed's off a hair. Uh, I think nine out of ten pros go one rail right there. Mm -hmm. Eight out of ten probably. Because you're always coming into your position where Fedor chose to go across. And it wasn't like you were laying up with the one rail. You could still be nice and aggressive and come down and get pretty close to the six like he did off the two cushions. Got a little straight. He may have to look to play the eight in the side. And 
that's another thing too. He doesn't stress much when he has to change his plan, and that's a, a huge thing as far as you know, not building the stress and not worrying so much. Okay, he can just roll forward. He's got to think about a little bit of the stretch, but not too much. I like the way he walked through the other side of the table to see what that stretch was going to feel like. Yeah. Based on the line that he was wanting. And that's his routine. Um, and the thing about the routine, he goes through his things, but sometimes it doesn't take as long as others just because the thought process doesn't need, need as much. But he still goes through his little checkpoints. Is he going all the way up here? It looks like he is. And that is because of the stretch. If he rolls it, he's probably a good foot short. Mm-hmm. Now, I like the zigzag, especially on the 10-footer myself, especially Newfeld. It spreads nice. Some guys will go three rails with it inside. This lays pretty perfect, about a tip of left, maybe not even that much with the draw. I think he's going back and forth. And this one here, the beauty of this shot is let it out. The second rail really kills it for you. Uh-oh. Did he spread enough? It's going to be close. He did just enough. Yeah. Yeah. It was a sweater. And well, that was the uh, reason that some players will play the three cushions around. It's just for that very reason to take that scratch out of there. But you got a lot more travel on the cue ball. And like you're saying, one new cloth, that tends to open up quite a bit off that first rail or second rail. Yeah, I kind of felt like he let up a hair. Uh, that way he didn't get his... If you go ahead and draw it, there's really no problems, right? You can't mm -hmm. get to the side, and you're always going to spread past the, that other side pocket. Wow, well, sweet stroke there. Yeah, breaking run out for Gorst. That will be his fourth of the event, first one in this set. Our score is 2-0. Fedor Gorst, now residing here in the U.S., has a green card till 2025, and he's trying to get his citizenship. A couple of the Polish players coming up in the next two matches, Fortunski and Jushishin. Two super straight shooters. Yeah. Oh, part of the... Polish contingent that's starting to make a real impact on the world stage. Both lefties. Really wants to avoid the top spin on the cue ball. That's when the timing's kind of so-so. I get those better. Boy, both the balls behind the one went in. The one hangs up. Where's the two? Another ball went in. Two got in the worst possible location <laughs> yeah. on good. the rail near the side pocket. Good thing the three's handy though, so that makes it to where you can come across and not have to get an angle so much on the three on the two ball, mm -hmm. and then feel a lot better about pocketing it down the rail. This is a little funny, you know, just because of speed control coming across. And anytime you're flying it past the side like that, Mark. It's almost like the hit on the one doesn't have to be so great just because anytime you're flying it past the side, the connection is good enough. You still get a lot of balls moving to yeah. the right direction. Yeah. Well, to get back, you have to hit it pretty square yeah, to get decent, it back there. Yeah, decent, right? So. Yeah. Well, here's a pretty good tester. Yeah, don't let up. This is what I always talk about this shot is go ahead and shoot it a little bit. You're not going to fire it, right? But don't kind of try to guide it. Your tip position is going to kill the ball. Yes, I was surprised he came across, Mark. I thought he would pinch it, withdraw. Yeah, the, if he pinches it, withdraw, it's a shorter swing, which enables greater accuracy. But all of a sudden, in the last stroke, he went way long, kind of almost in the uncharted waters from what he prepped on the practice swings. Yeah. He'd like to get a good feel here of elevating the cue stick a little bit, I think, to come back behind the three. The thing is... He needs to hit the two thick enough to bank it down, you know, just kind of a soft mm -hmm. one rail behind the nine and seven. 
touchy shot. That's what he's looking at. Where do I come with the cue ball? So what he's saying is the shot adds up. Don't come behind the three. The shot adds up to just come back to maybe the first diamond where the cue ball's at now. Mm -hmm. That way he can control the two a little bit better. At least that's what it looks like he was uh, sizing up. See how he didn't come all the way back? And that was all about being able to control the two more. And it got away from him just a little bit. But after a big miss, what does this shot look like uh, for <laughs> yeah. Roberto? No natural path. He has to add English one way or another with the 7, 10, and 9 there. On top of the power. Yeah, he may not shoot at this. I mean, this isn't the most terrible ball to duck on. You don't have to get to like, oh, i got to make shot for shot. He's going to stun this ball. Watch out for the two-rail scratch where he's standing. Man. Wow, how good he hit that. Really good. And I think he took that on because there was not a reasonably easy safety. You know, he was sort of forced into it. The safety was going to be as hard of a hit as the pocketing. Yeah, and talked about it at the beginning of the match. There's going to be situations uh, where he needs to take on the shot. Uh, not only get some confidence going, but whether you do play the nice safety right there. You know, Federer, mm -hmm. like a lot of these guys, great players, they just f figure things out a lot <laughs> to get out of those safeties, it seems like. All right, he's got to overcut this a little bit to run the cue ball. No, very good. A very high quality uh, series of shots here by Roberto Gomez, world class. This will be his first game. And he trails in the match one game to two. And Roberto is a very uh, seasoned, creative player. He sees a lot, you know, different types mm -hmm. of shots. And it's really where his one pocket has come along so quickly just you know four probably three to four serious years of playing it he's had a lot of big wins everybody loves him just because he's always cheerful and happy and smiling like he, he comes and like when i walk into the room he always comes over and greets me and hey but he, it's not me it's everybody yeah you know, that's, that's how he treats everybody there you have two to one for gorse of course some Things technically being worked on here at the Derby to improve y'all's viewing, and these guys are constantly working hard to make sure of that. It's a great technical world we live in, but sometimes it can get a little hairy, right? Right, right, and the uh, struggles that we encountered were not brought on by us, but simply technology sometimes goes awry. And so uh, we certainly appreciate everyone being patient with us as we work through this. Yeah, cue ball should land about the first diamond and then scoot on a little bit. First diamond past the side and maybe scoot on a little bit more. Oh, he missed it. Oh. Caught it thin, so didn't get the ricochet off the rack. And he knew it as soon as he hit it, too. I don't know if you noticed. He turned to the side. He kind of almost knew the cue ball was <laughs> heading that direction. Yeah, he knew he didn't make the hit that he wanted. And that's where you get all these balls on the side when, when you really miss the one. Again, see them all grouped. And there's no coincidence there. When Roberto broke, they were all on the opposite side, right? Mm -hmm. He broke from the left and missed it on the left. There, Fetter broke from the right, missed it on the right. Look where all the balls are at. I don't think it's a coincidence. He's going to look at maybe a three foul situation, trying to snuggle them up. Uh, on the six ten seven maybe, or he's running the cue ball the other direction. Uh. So the reason he's doing this is he's trying to put the one in a position, if he not only to cut off some of the one maybe, but where he can play the third foul a little easier. But the problem here is even if he got the snooker, Fetter's a huge favorite to kick at this ball and hit it no matter where it is. You had ball in hand and it's an open layout, but not an easy layout. And then if you lose from here. After a series of shots, not necessarily instantly, you likely never get ball in hand with that layout that good. Well, I'll tell you, 
I think there was a chance to run out, to be honest with you. With That's Paul. what I'm saying. Yeah. yeah, and there's almost no chance to three foul Fetter. We've seen it like one time in three years. Yeah. You know, so, I mean, ball in the hand, it's not that bad. And if you get stuck later on, you can still play safe. A lot of times you can protect yourself. You don't have to go naked in the clusters and hope. But now, yeah. look at that one shot later, he had ball in hand. Now he's kicking for his life. Yeah, and I kind of thought it was a loose play on the safety as well. Not not only I think I would have maybe looked at running out, but I thought the, the direction he played the safety maybe a little light. Right, you could have pinned the cue ball in behind the clutter. Absolutely, yeah. He was thinking of the third foul already, though, I promise. He was trying to put the one over in more congestion to make the third foul easy. Does he yeah. have to play this with inside to go into the four? It's not the worst thing to bump the four up near the three and the five. Right. Yeah, right? And you can be aggressive with this, knowing the four is going to slow you down a little bit. You can hit it a little more uh, confidently. Now, he played it light, and he's going to end up over the four a little. Nothing wrong with that, though, playing it light. It's just going to be a little more difficult, maybe. Now, of course, he's going to take a look. He's got wide open spaces here. Well, and the thing you talked about with ball in hand that is also there is the first five were open and the fives near the six so like you always say run some balls to get to that effective safety right and pre-planned safety yeah and not only that you get to knock some balls in you know with that ball in hand if you're roberto you get to you know time at the table i know that sounds a little amateur ish but it's a real thing uh that time right. at the table is for how difficult the 10-foot table is, that's one shot right there where you're going for position and you're willing to play a little bit longer. you got ample room to not hook yourself. So that's the one little tiny aspect that the 10-footer is a little bit better. Everything else, it's more difficult. Yeah, the shot I was, I was telling a friend of mine about that I think separates Fetter a little bit also is you know how the money balls around the spot, right, a lot. Yeah. Well, any of those types of shots that the guys stun a lot, right? Well, there's so much more room on the bottom rail mm -hmm. to come tight out of the corner where on a nine foot, if you're playing position on a ball and you have to stun it, you're always worried if you have to come tight. And if I flinch a little bit, I could go right off in this corner, maybe catch the point. Well, now that bottom rail's got another six inches on both sides. So you figure Fetter to hit his mark at a huge uh, right. percentage. Uh-oh. Oof. And he's gotten too thin. He wanted to be able to go into the seven with the cue ball, uh, kind of with a high ball there. Maybe, right. maybe develop position. Maybe a, a simple safety. Now he's looking. He's gonna, he knows he's going to bump the seven. Yeah, but, but now it looks he's like he's hitting the high side of the seven, the wrong direction. So now he was looking at: Can I clatter the seven into the six? Right. And the thing is, or the you're, ten. you're yeah. right about that. But if he hits more speed, he catches the seven even thinner. Oh, yeah. Right. So this may not open at all. Well, it's a delicate play. And then, naturally, how you hit the pocket with this ball dictates how thick or thin you land on that seven. I don't know. Forward here, to me, looks very scary, like you're going to catch that seven thin. Now, in this case, I think it might be time to play safe. <laughs> Yo. Well, there's some other shots. I mean, there is a three-rail angle back at those balls with low left, and he certainly possesses the power to do oh, so. Oh, yeah. You know, there's, yeah, there's some other shots Yeah, that's a bad choice, there. yeah. Yeah, it looks like he's content to go after the seven, though. I think he hits it thin, though. Yeah. He was always hitting the seven thin, I yep. thought. Yeah. With speed, I mean. And that's why the little bit of that overcut on the four cost him a little bit on the cue ball on the five. Yeah, that's how sensitive this is. He hit the pocket. It's a four and an eighth inch pocket. And we're talking about, well, he hit a little bit thin. Yeah. Uh, from range and off, <laughs> off angle. And with but spin and everything else. Right. So, so it's very capable of hitting it a little thin, but it was a little taxing there. And I'll tell you, this is early in the match to be, if you're unsettled and your gut is saying, man, I really don't like this breakout, you mm -hmm. may have to just lay up for the safety. This is an important game here. Like there, you, wow. this is one, something you cannot afford, uh, especially Roberto, you, you might say. He was planning on going heavy into the seven there, right? I have no idea. But uh, I think so, because look at the pace he used. What, I like drawing out, and if I evaluate the cross-side bank on the 6, Mark, and I like it, yeah. I shoot it. If not, I just stick him on the 10. Mm -hmm. This is an important game early in the match. And now it's up in the air, because he's going to have to make a hard kick and just hope to get the stick. Or uh, He ought to go the in-rail. 
I know I know he could kick and cut it and let the seven hold the cue ball, stuff like that. But he could have fouled as well. I'd have to go the end rail here. And you see how I used the seven to kind of slow the cue ball down mm -hmm. a little bit? The score now is two to one. Gorst in front. And you know, a couple of these decisions suggest that uh, he's really feeling heat from playing Fedor. Uh, that's Absolutely. that's how I'm like Absolutely. trying for the three foul rule. Uh, that didn't make sense. And then now his uh, trying to go past the ball. Yeah, trying and, to go into him. And, period, kick, yeah. and kicking off the side rail to yeah. make it, you know. Well, he made a beautiful hit there. That he was did. just dangerous. But we both know yeah. that it's a lower percentage and you don't hardly ever get separation. It turned out favorably, but I'm just saying the decisions, not what the results were. I'm just saying the decisions suggest that he's a little worried about playing Fedor. Well, the thing is, what Fetter does at times is he just, you don't, you know, he's, so just like all the greats, it, it'll get you in your head to where, oh, I don't want to let him back at the table. <laughs> you know what I mean? Kind of right. thing, right? So it made you go a little a little more aggressive there on the five. And these guys are aggressive nature anyways. I understand it. Right. So it's interesting shot here. I mean, he's an aggressive player, but he could double bank the six back where it's at with a high ball. Run the cue ball a couple rails behind the 10, back up by the 7. You're probably going to leave an opening, but it's going to be a difficult play to get back on the 7. Hard not to shoot here, though. Can you just make a stop shot and then bang the 6-ball th three rails around to the Absolutely end rail? Absolutely the best that's... shot. I didn't even see that. Absolutely the best shot. I don't know if that's what he's doing. but No, he's you got attacking, to... so drawing two rails by the 10 in between the 10 and the side. Oh, he went three with inside. Even more difficult, in my opinion. Hello, nine ball. Ooh. <laughs> Much needed. <laughs> He's smiling. <laughs> Got the little angle to get down on the seven. Okay, well, that's the best deal if you can get it. Oh, he's perfect. I mean, up a little straightish here. Yep. Yes, sir. Ooh. Yes, sir. Ooh, they got ugly. Yep. And the five by ten. <laughs> It's just right. every now and again will cause more of a miss on this rail first shot if he plays it that way. It looks like he's going ball first. He's just going to cheat the pocket, go forward with a tip of left. Yeah, I like that. He got a lot out of that one. Yeah, it's kind uh, of a shot we practice uh, with some training, but not on the short rail, though, on the long rail more. I was thinking of if we just got half that close to the eight, that would be a pretty good result. Now, I don't, you know, Roberto's match yesterday, I didn't do that match. You told me about it. And, uh, sounds like he never really played. He didn't play great. Yeah. He didn't play bad by yeah, any means, yeah, but yeah. it was more of Alex like, kind of not finishing some racks and stuff like that. Right. right. So now 2 2 in this match. Where Fetter came off the best performance uh, of the first round with the 938 TPA. Okay, we're going to take a momentary break. <laughs> Fedor's laughing, Roberto's laughing. He knows he almost hung that 10 ball there. All right, we're back. Two games apiece. Gomez will be breaking now. Much better on his second break. Much more solid hit. The five and the six are the two balls right behind the one that most likely find the side pocket. but he did make them both. One tracking downward. Eight's going to get a little funny. No, it's okay. Definitely has a pocket. It's just got to have some good speed control come on one row across. 
want to get above the two. While we're on player break, Jeremy just informed me that Allison Fisher had qualified to play in the finals of the World Championship. Not pulling against anybody, but I would love to see Allison Fisher win that. Yeah, her first final in that event since 2010, so it's been a minute. But she's been putting in more time. And I think just like uh, just like the the men's game, right? I mean, it's in such a good spot. I'd, I'd love to be out there playing with these guys, and she's able to do it. And I think the young ladies and the way that, you know, the, the, that's developing is also is kind of inspirational for her. Yeah. She played at a time to... To be fair, there was just a handful of threats. Uh, and now that's a little bit of a different story. Oh, I'm surprised he played it light. Really surprised he played it light. He didn't want to come across. He was trying to get a three-rail angle. The problem is the seven's a little funny, and he didn't get much angle on the two anyways. He would have really had to jam that. And he was trying to slow the cue ball down to hold it, and that's what accounted for the miss. He didn't yeah. hit it terribly. It, was, it wasn't a wild miss. It was one he was trying to manipulate the pocket to get the cue ball to locate. And the surprising thing to me, it was pretty natural to go ahead and let your stroke out a little bit with a high and a little left to go by the seven out into the center of the table for the draw stroke on the two. But and all 16 that entered this event can't afford mistakes, of course, no matter who they're playing, but Again, this seems like the guy you really have to be limited mm -hmm. to get across that finish line. Now, he's a little full, so he's afraid of going down forward. He may end up on top of the three a little. And if he puts a top inside, he has to cut it here more, which definitely sends him at the three. He may get a little bump on the three here, Mark. That's what he was looking at. He wanted to see if he could thread the cue ball between the eight and three. That's the bump, bump. I was talking about, yeah. It's just hard to have anything bad, bad go wrong. You may not develop it, you know, mm -hmm. the offensive shot you want. But that's also kind of like speed we talk about when balls are out in the middle of the table tied up. You know, that foot speed, kind of just bumping them open enough, you know. And he was, you know, he knows that there's a great likelihood he comes out with okay, and if not, uh, at that speed, you're, you're never getting hidden or hurt. Or right. You're playing effective safety with uh, so many balls near. Now, what's the score on that eight ball down there? It looks like it he's got to get goes. on it. it but I'm saying he's got to get on that pretty good to be able to control it for the nine ball next. Yeah. And he's in the position that he excels at pretty well, the full hits and drawing you know, back to the proper angle on the seven. He controls those speeds nicely. Now, the thing he has to worry about a little bit is elevation over a ball maybe so it looks like he's going forward with top inside to get a little closer or is he stunning yeah he's stunning and see how he does that so well mark mm -hmm. you know the speed seems to always be right easy to be short there or over hit it and i don't honestly think on the 10 footer it allows more of that kind of shot a little more room on the rails All right, key to this is don't let up. That way it draws kind of immediately off the seven, not so much spinning into the rail. Like that. You see how it drew mm. before the seven, before it got to the rail, right? What a pretty shot to get the cue ball down that close because that's what I was always concerned about. If you don't get on here good, it's really tough to get out. Well, it got, a lot of guys let up right there, and it doesn't draw much. It goes into the rail, so you end up with more of an angle on the eight. Thin. Now you have to think a little bit. <laughs> Yeah, do I want to go into the nine? Right, yeah, right. Exactly. But not only the 10-footer offers a little more space to get that draw started uh, before getting into the rail with yeah. the cue ball, but also being aware of that's what you really want to do. Sometimes you overlook that and just say, oh, let me hit a little low left here and just bring it back, and I don't quite get the draw on the ball. But, of course, this guy's aware of everything. <laughs> on probably every pool table in the place. <laughs> Back into his robotic mode right now. Yeah. So he's looking to take a 3-2 lead. But again, that's, of course, having a special mind, and he's a special guy. But the reps, 
the reps make it to where you're not going to overlook much. And that's everything. Yeah. Putting in the time. Knowledge is only as good as how much time you put in to support it. Three two is our score. Six. He'll be breaking. Roberto, though, right in it, of course, where he needs to be early. John Gabriel over in the corner. Oh, yeah. His, yeah. El his Elton John glasses. Yeah, he always cracks me up with those. I'll I tell you, I ain't gonna lie. I keep looking at them. They just, I just... It just doesn't seem <laughs> anything but a little funny. Yeah. Old Tulsa boy there all of a sudden yeah. sporting that Broken arrow, rock and I believe, roll. right? Which is a part of Tulsa, a suburb of Tulsa. I've known John since I was 19, maybe. Real pleasant guy. Great guy. And, and a guy that, in my opinion, if went if the full route, you know, of, of playing professionally, would have made a Moscone Cup team or two, in my opinion. Just, mm -hmm. just because of being around all those pros so much mm -hmm. more often, his tool set was so high. Yeah. And, uh, and you know, his mental has changed through the years, too. You know, when, when John was younger, he was so talented, occasionally he'd get a little upset during a match and have a problem, but he's got, like, the perfect mind to play great now. A little worry there. Uh, no pocket for the one either. Were you ever a hothead, Jeremy? Um, when I first started, yeah, yeah, I was uh, I was a very competitive person. You know, I, I I'm not going to let you know it. You know, oh, I see. One time I I worked at the pool room. I, of course, I had two jobs. I quit one of them immediately so I could go get a job at the game room and play for free. And uh, <laughs> you know, we'd play five dollar pool. I didn't venture into Houston for about a year because uh -huh. everyone told me how great of players there were in Houston. So, but five dollars a game, I lost uh, like a hundred bucks to a friend of mine, Sammy Postoke was his name, and the last thing I had left from the cue stick was just the joint. <laughs> I went out on the curb and beat that cue down. And Oh, yeah. That sounds terrible, but I ended up drilling a little hole in the joint and making a little keychain out of it. Just a little <laughs> reminder. So. But overall, yeah, not too bad. Hard to imagine anyone broke more cues than Jeff Carter, but uh, I'm certainly Strickland has the all-time record. But On the professional ranks? Yeah. I never really did. One did come apart when I was in a, a uh, <laughs> fit of anger, but it was a cheap cue that was it just broke without even striking anything foul. I think he hit the four ball, didn't he? Uh, no? Didn't notice. Okay. Yeah, he made a good hit on the one, but boy, I sure thought I saw the four ball move. It's almost like a when you go by it closely, you can get like a reflection that makes yeah, you maybe. think it moves. He Kinda clearly like when, hit where he was aiming, so. Yeah. Yeah, I actually had one break here uh, several, several years ago, but there was a flaw in the cue a little bit. You could always hear a little, like like when you put it together, you could hear a little crick in it, mm -hmm. you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. So I kind of <laughs> tapped it a little more than tapped it on the table, and it just split right in half. For me, uh, mine had, you know, it was just poorly manufactured to begin with, and I just barely shook it. But there's been other times when it should have broke mm. that it didn't. Oh, it, absolutely. But it was out of my control. I was angry. Oh, I've said a few times I got away with one there. That's for sure. <laughs> it's about as dumb a thing as you can do, but we do it anyway, I guess. Yeah. Okay, I wouldn't get too involved with this kick shot. Just the speed itself. He hit it great. Coming underneath it. And this is where... This is good for Roberto in this match, I think. Just kind of get some time at the table battling, kind of forget what's going on a little bit more, just play some pool. Not getting his own head too much. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I think he might settle in because at mm -hmm. first he made a couple of decisions that were highly suspect. Yeah, this is tricky just because, you know, if you don't get the snooker the way the balls lie, or lay rather, uh, that it could be very penal. Yeah. Mm. That's why he was going for a little more there, a little separation, rather than just playing off the right side, trying to use the eight or the seven, putting the one up by the four. And now surrendered a 
Very nice shot. Dug the cue ball into the good position here. And this is where looking is important on the 5 by 10 just because improving your comfort is huge. All right, now he's going forward. He knew there were no worries there being the right-hander. But anytime you're out in the middle of the table, going one inch, two inches more somewhere can make things just a lot easier as far as reaching the ball. 3-2 is our score. Gomez is trailing, but at the table. Well, he didn't really want to bump the six forward, and you say, well, he's only eight inches apart, I understand, but now it makes it a little bit more work to get the cue ball down by the seven. So he chose rail first. Good recovery shot. A stretch. The righty should be able to reach it though. And that shot in particular is another one that you may see a little more on the 10 footer running for the side there versus pulling the ball a little bit for, you know, two rails out for the corner. Mm -hmm. Pretty position play there. Two cushions coming right into his zone. All these shots, though, like you saw him take that second look. I mean, they respect this table and definitely the pockets. Very nice. 3-3. Three, three. And we're all tied up again. Three apiece. It's amazing how he repeats. You know, Roberto's got that his head slowly comes up. I mean, just ever so yeah. mildly mm -hmm. as he's in the stroke, and it's amazing how he repeats it. Three, three. Race to 11 here. He's known as Superman, and his girlfriend is Superwoman, Kelly Isaac. She used to be here all the time, but then she took a job as a flight attendant, so she still plays. Might have even been at the World Championship, but nevertheless, she's not here as often as we we're used to seeing her. Yeah, I think she's really enjoying that work from what I see on the socials also, so that's always nice. Three and the four, right behind the one. Two and seven are the four railers going around the table. He's getting a pretty good connection overall. Getting a lot of response from the rack. Two balls are in. Nice shot on the one. Yeah, we'll see. if I think he can just use it like a middle left and just let the cue ball spread off of one rail and then catching the second rail getting below the 10. I don't think he really has to draw this. Some guys will draw it, but... but I use a comp See, he didn't really draw it much. He just kind of threw the, you know, kind of swung into the ball a little, swerved it and threw it in. What happens is when you do that, the deflection makes it to where the cue ball wants to start in that direction, right? Heading, mm -hmm. heading the, the way you need. So it's not really a draw stroke. He's got pretty straight in here, so now he's got to stroke it up out of there. Is he going to come all the way down for the side? or I would, Yeah, it looks like he's going to try and get across. This we could be nine. dangerous, yeah. and it's perfect. What a good shot. Yeah, and you notice no side spin on that one. That way he could let the stroke out a little more without worrying about it really taking off. And you don't have to compensate for your squirt effect, too. Yeah. You hit that much more comfortably. Whew, I thought he overcut that. I think he did, too. Yeah, I saw <laughs> the face. Uh, Roberto yeah. make some funny faces, that's for sure. Very animated player for the most part.
very effective break shot and a bunch of nice ones since. He can he can cheat it and go down below the eight. He can go with a high ball inside out to the center. Oh, he could cheat it just to hold. Okay. I thought he had a hair more angle than that. It's coming across the table, Jeremy. That's what I, I was think thinking. so, but this is where the ten footer you can really kill the ball a lot. You don't have to come across as much as the nine footer, but beautiful perfect, shot. Yeah. Had to thread it pretty close to the nine so we could get the angle where the cue ball naturally lopes towards the ten from this. High quality break and run out here. Definitely looks more settled than the beginning yeah. of the match. Yeah, definitely that is true. And good break and run out there. And a nice break and run there for first Pat lead, Champion. right? For for and, Gomez, and first break and run out of the event for Gomez. As so we head into rack eight, Fedor Gorst will be breaking. Hard to believe winning a match. Just one match in this event without a break and run. He did right. that yesterday. Yeah, actually, yesterday for these guys was two days ago. <laughs> yeah, the first you're right. match. Yeah, yeah. yeah, you're right. First round. Now that yeah. I think about it, I think about it. Yeah, the next wave was from yesterday, the following two matches here this evening. All right. Not the squares hits his last few. He's been off to the right a bit. <laughs> and again. Again off to the right. It's a good thing he bounced it behind the side pocket. Dry break, so doors opening here for Roberto. He's got to kind of let the stroke out here a little bit if he wants the English to take coming two rails, you know, above the seven, mm -hmm. back where the cue ball's at now, and then back out. Doesn't want to take on the long distance, I don't think. But this is where tip position means a lot. Now he's elevating quite a bit. This is so he's trying to create a little bounce off the one. See, like that. He's going to love this result. Man, what a good hit. So that's where, again, the preference, right? He used less spin, a little more, like I said, a downward hit on the cue ball. Yeah. Uh, to gain that route. And he could feel it. Yeah. But like Buddy, for instance, you know, I, I, I wouldn't say I copied my game around Buddy, but I watched him so much. And, of course, he was so highly regarded when it came to running through the rack. He would hardly ever shoot it like that. He would shoot it mainly with a little more tip position, mm -hmm. leveling out and going back and forth. <clears throat> so there's really no right or wrong. It's just kind of like uh, what you like and what your technique sets up for, too. Yeah. Did you get to spend a lot of time with Buddy Hall? Oh, yeah. Yeah. Well, I say, oh, yeah. I mean, I spent all the time I could at the tournaments. But then uh, he lived uh, with Leonard Bloodworth for about a year or so. Um, uh -huh. When I was about 19 or 20, I guess. Leonard had the only diamond table, I think, in all of Texas at that time, and definitely the only one with Simona's cloth. So it was nice to go over there and get to hit a few balls. You know, the rest of the country had Simona's cloth, and we didn't in Texas, it seemed like. All right, all speed control here. He likes the line, I think. It's going to fade a bit. Yeah, as one of those guys, I'd be in the stands, you know, watching a lot well, of him. Me and, too. Him and Nick, uh, certain ones. I have a, of course. I have a pretty extensive collection of Accustat videos, <laughs> if you can imagine this. Look at this. Oh, I thought I was going to get through Great them. Great hit. And uh, Buddy Halls, Mike Siegels, and certainly Efren Reyes. Mm -hmm. That's my catalog right there. I have the most of those. I drew Buddy a lot, too. Uh, in, in tournaments, regional, and then pro tournaments as well. Mm -hmm. uh, the first couple of years especially, he just thumped me. Uh, it wasn't even close. Uh, I think the first year in 96, I played seven pro tournaments. I won one match in seven tournaments. Oh, really? Yeah, and it was the kind of thing of getting used to it, Mark. You know, I'm, a lot of the guys, to be honest with you, I, I beat playing for money um, or in other tournaments. 
but getting used to those bigger tournaments. Uh, yeah. You know. No, that's good. But most guys, you know, that have your credentials that, you know, are Hall of Fame worthy, they always, I, I always beat him. I robbed that guy. They never oh, yeah. actually talk about the other, uh, hey, bud, remember when you lost? Yeah. You know, I mean, <laughs> and everybody loses or they didn't play. Yeah, Efren, uh, I remember the first time I finally beat him. That's the Camel Tour 98, actually. In Denver. I don't know if you remember that tournament, what a great tournament that was. Might be cutting at this. Yeah. Wow. Overcut it. Wow, what a hit. Hard to imagine. Does the six pass the ten? If the six doesn't pass the ten, this could be awkward. It it looks like it does. However, uh, it also looks like he only has part of a pocket if he yeah. goes to that past the ten. I think he's fairly limited on what he can do on the five. I think he can shove it in there. I do think he can make it. Maybe not. Maybe he's crossing this over lightly with a high ball and running the cue ball. Yeah, the more I look at it, that's what he's doing for sure. Yeah, that's a great shot from there. Uh, people don't recognize how thin and perfect the execution had to be on that. 4-3 our score. Gomez in front. These are these delicate little circumstances that we tend to not practice, but you really need to if you want to play at this level. Look at that nice hit. Yeah. That's the type of shot when it's so full like that. Uh, notice he knocked the five all the way down the table. Very little cue ball travel, so it tells you how full it was. Mm -hmm. And you saw him kind of come off the shot quickly just because it's such a scary shot to double kiss. <laughs> right. You can hit it really well and just barely catch that double kiss and... Uh, and sell the game out. And he's looking to pocket this ball. So that tells me the six probably does play by the ten. Because he's coming at the at the nine-ish if he goes to attack. The key to this again is don't let up. Make sure you get through the ball, which he always does. I don't have to really worry about that with him. Missed it on the proper side. If you hit that heavy, you sell out when you miss. Yeah, he's got to play the five up on the left side rail behind the eight and run the cue ball a few rails uh, back uh, to the end rail. Even if the five peaks its head, it's going to be very difficult for Fetter to attack. You don't want to clip it. You want the five to come up about the middle diamond on the side rail. You don't want it near the pocket just in case you uh, give up a shot. Now, this is all about rail speed. Really, really good shot. Yeah, and that's the shot, though. The percentages play on your favor, especially on the 10-footer, right? Right. And that's Some... another one of those safeties off the inner rail that you and I talked about. you got to have a bunch of different ways to go at it. Yeah. That was, uh, well, I mean, if you had this video and you replayed that shot and then practiced it, it's coming up. Oh, <laughs> absolutely. The, the variation of this shot, that a shot alone, is like 10 or 20 different little variations of it, how you'll play it with speed, different things. So. And the people that do that, they're going to practice it, and then it's going to come up and win some tournaments and stuff, and they're going to think, you know, really, i got to send Mark and Jeremy $500. <laughs> now, they're not going to do it. And they might but, send Roberto a little something, too, mm -hmm. there for the yeah. execution. But it will have great value to everybody that does that. Well, that's what I mean also. You know, er, at the start of the match, he may it almost looked like he feared letting Fetter see any ball, right? Try to do too much. And there you have it. Fetter's human. You know, you keep playing the right shot. He caught that a little thick and now he's, you know, giving up a play for Roberto. Oh, he can't have those, though. And the thing with Roberto that sometimes I wonder is like right there, he was hitting almost middle ball. Um, wasn't really drawing it that much. 
but he starts with the tip so low to change it so now if, when he's barely coming up with the tip it seems to not mm. bother him at all uh, but starting so low on the felt to come all the way to middle ball that's a long ways is he going to play the nine I guess not just the safety five behind the six cue ball up table and Fetters speed and hit on the ball hasn't been it's what impeccable. we're used to yeah. right. it hasn't been as impeccable now this is a kick and stick type of thing it's just that the eight ball may trap the five by the side pocket Yeah, you just got to play it, though. This one you need to spin into, though. That way you get that line to where the five, what you're hoping is, it goes by the eight to the side rail. And well, up, and up then the, the cue ball doesn't come out hot. If you go flat in there, if you don't spin into it, then that cue ball comes out. Right, right. But you could take a different fatter angle to, to bank it away between the six, eight, you know? Yeah. He even caught that a little bit thin. His speed's going to be okay, though. Oh, boy. Is it ever... All right, so this is another one of those. Do you try to edge it? You could spin it with a lot of right, and again, let the five come up a little near the head string, come two rails inside the seven, eight, and to that in rail again. Not a bad shot. Similar to uh, what Roberto did earlier. Hmm. I mean, the five's yeah. not gonna get behind the eight this time, but you're still gonna leave it out in space. Trying to edge it. Hate to whiff the ball, right? Yeah, I'm not seeing anything here that looks appetizing at all. <laughs> what would it be? Yeah, you can't really bank the five down by the ten. There's not really anywhere to, to guard. I think that shot with a lot of right English, kind of throw the five back, let it come up by the head string, come two rails to that end rail, kind of like Roberto did earlier. You see that? He just caught it too thick. But that's, that's the, the gamble in the shot. Well, he was in a tough spot. Yeah, there. he's close. Wasn't the worst result that he could have been. Well, if he can cross side this, it looks natural to come down and get on the six uh, by the nine in the corner to me. He's looking like he thinks he He's ducking behind the eight. Oh, okay. Benching him up. Oh, he didn't come close oh, there. Yeah, that was weird. Yeah. Huh. And I wonder if he was trying to bank it in and slide by the eight for the safety and a bit of shape. Because he didn't have the best direction on the five there, but I guess he figured to bury the cue ball, right? That's why he kind of didn't worry about the five. He maybe just, when he hit it heavy, I don't know what happened. Yeah, Hard to say. Yeah. I know one thing. It didn't even come close to getting behind the eight. He went right into it, right? <laughs> right. He may end up below the six here because he's got to get a lot of dig. That's good. Yeah, that'll do. Still a lot of work. I think he's tight on the six. The eight doesn't go by the nine, obviously. So. I think this ball's tight, Mark. No, I agree. And he's straight-ish. Looks like he can stun off a small angle. The cue ball can bump the 10. No, he has why he's stunned. Yeah, now he's yeah. got to track the cue ball. Now he's got the wrong angle. He may take this in the corner. He may not fool around with speed here. He may just say, hey, I, I pocket this ball at a high rate, and it's very natural. He's looking at long and hard into the corner. And I think he recognizes that he has, you know, mishit a few balls, right? Take a little more look at the seven. Got it down. Great. Great shot. Now you want to go with a, probably a high ball. That way you can reach it. Could kill it, I guess, and stretch. Nothing wrong with that. He's going to stun out to be able to reach it. Not He's going to use the bridge. <laughs> yeah, not too worried about the stretch, I guess. He's so, he can just roll this. He doesn't yeah, have to do exactly. anything. Yeah, exactly. Not very attacking on the cue ball. <clears throat> it would be different if it, the cue ball had to go somewhere, but this is just sure. get this ball down. He's not going to miss. 
It's the tire score these last two at four apiece. Wow, he shot it more. I would have rather rolled forward, me, frankly. Well, me too. <laughs> Just because now you got to roll this perfectly straight in. When yeah. if you roll it ahead six inches, now you get a huge margin of error. Yeah, I would, you know, you simplify it with the bridge, right? I do, anyways. Yeah. My build is that 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 game, but now we're all tied up again. You're not dinking it when you roll it. You're still, you know, putting a little bit of a swing on it. I just wanted to roll it ahead six inches. Yeah. That's all. That'd be good, but. Nevertheless, I think he thought he could stun it away from the rail better. 4-4 four, four is our score. Shane Van Boning has entered the arena. He's sitting down there next to John Mars. John just adores Shane. Oh, yeah. Do you know this? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. He's told me more than once. And and not in a cocky way, but anybody who wants to play Shane some, he's got a pretty good hunk of money here that he'll play Shane play for. And he picked a good horse. And I think it has to do not just with Shane's ability, but his, uh, I'm going to put it, his personality, his... Uh, Demeanor, his character, personal character is the word I'm looking for. Yeah, I think he knows he's an honorable guy. Yeah, when I think about John Mars, I would think he's going to attach himself to quality, right? So, yeah, yeah. and uh, Shane's you know quality in a lot of ways. Oh yeah, the the Rolls Royce of pool players. All right, taking dead aim here, not holding back at all. No, he has a powerful stroke. He's getting a lot of consistencies in that one and the cue ball getting back here together. The two's ended up in that spot quite often in this match. Ish. Now he can kind of hold the ball for that two in the side, maybe. I don't know. To come across for the three. We'll see. Maybe the two in the side is a little tougher. The overhead tells me it's uh, it's not easy. Right. The overhead is deceptive, though. It fools me quite often. It's the easiest look that we have, but the, sometimes when you rely on it for the angles, it's not good. And he doesn't want straight. Straight's no good. No, I think, oh, okay. I thought he felt really comfortable about playing that in the side, but I guess not. Yeah, I think that's why he came more across, mm -hmm. just because he wanted to play in the corner. The nine's, the three's quite a bit covered up. I mean, you got to get all the way across, yeah. and then you still have a seven ball to consider. He's a little off angle to where the draw. I don't think he can put the low left and really spin the ball back over. We'll see. Maybe he can cheat it. Oh, he went high inside. Caught a little of the point. Needs a friendly rub. Oh man, what a great shot. No, it's so funny. He caught a little of the point on the far side of the shot, um, nearest the camera angle we're on. But, but when you see how much side spin he had on there, we know he was intending to go there. Absolutely you know, so. he was, but normally that second point isn't oh, yeah. something that's going to get you going out yeah. off the rail, and it just caught it just enough not to, to make it bounce out a little bit, which helped him, but not really slow the cue ball down much. Clearly. A lot of times you'll catch that point prior on purpose, to mm -hmm. avoid the side, but the one past the side is something you don't see very often. Now, tough shot here, but he's negotiated some tough circumstances already, and he's very inspired to break him around. You feel like, gosh, I don't want to give this one back. I want to make a quality run out here. It's just going back and forth, right? Yeah, he's missed. Oh, I thought he hung it, and he overcut it and caught the nine. I like him simplifying the shot mm -hmm. like you would on a nine-footer, mm -hmm. just go back and forth, take the six in the corner. Just that almost missed it. Now he's facing yet another important ball. Natural, though, two rails, right, for the seven in the opposite corner. Could kill it, I guess, but looks pretty natural, two rails. Yeah, beauty, he killed it one rail. What good speed that was. Yeah. That makes life a lot easier. Now the key is no letdown. And I don't think he will because he knows he's got to make these things happen here to beat 
Fetter Gorst. And what you notice there with the with the extension, the straight draw, no left on the ball. You want to stay away from the side spin with the extension because the weight of the cue, you don't get to make your full swing. Some things change, and uh, you can deal with a lot of the different deflection deflections. Excuse me. Yeah. That you're not used to. Well, I think. That extra mass on there squirts the cue ball to the side when you put side spin yeah, on there. That's what greater I mean. amounts, deflection. and you're yeah. not familiar. You're not familiar with that, so it's you're less effective. I think even like I'm conscious of that, and it's still kind of like a, yeah a nervy shot to me, right? So I try to stick to straight. Boy, that shot down the long rail into the corner pocket with side spin. That was the shot that opened up this rack. And this is the second consecutive break and run out for and run. Roberto and Gomez, Superman. who now leads 5 4. He has a one game advantage now, and five games right to four. Towards the middle Heading into rack 10, Fedor, while breaking. Well, 5 4, you can see it after nine games. Definitely settled in. I think he, he, he probably could even settle in more, and I think he will, that being Roberto. The one that's a little shocking to me is the fetter a little bit. Um, but just carry him at such a high standard, right? Yeah. Anything that's less than perfect, and then the only thing, what's wrong with fetter? <laughs> as hard as could be, 5 by 10, 4 and 8 inch pockets. No matter how you fit and trained and practiced you are, there's still so many things that go awry. The one thing you always get from Fetter is 100% effort. Yeah, and he's really had struggles off the right side of this one, threatening that side pocket. Did lose the cue ball once in that side pocket, so that's the first thing to kind of remedy. Hit it again. Hmm. Look at that. He did not hit them well. Two balls are in, and he's straight in on the two. So. Yeah, he's drawn, I think, pretty easily back for the three in the side. If he gets on the three in the side, then he's liable to carve through this rack, no problem. But this is the kind of the, the start of that. Got to be a good shot here. Yeah, he's, he's close enough to it to where you can cheat it, and you don't really have to flirt with the six at all, I think. Mm-hmm. Again, straight draw. You don't really want to throw it. That sounds like the way to do it, but when you throw it, the cue ball kind of jerks off to the right with that spin. So that's just kind of what it does. Mission accomplished there. That was perfect speed. Yeah, really good. So you got a stop, a stop, and then you just hit the five, cut the five in, and roll up on the six. Yeah, to that little angle to come across. He does have to get the nice angle. Yeah. On the eight and not have to worry about the, the ten. So or at least straight in on the eight. Straight in on the eight. Stop, okay. he's gonna back it up just a little bit. Yeah. That way he gathers this angle here on the six. Not a big, big one. Right, if we can grab the overhead real quick. He just wants to just get past the six ball up here. Uh, that's too light. He preserved too much angle here. Now he's gotta be a shot maker. Yeah, but I mean, if you hit it with low outside, it doesn't agree with really getting on the eight in the corner. Then you're going to go past what you need, right? You're probably going to have to stay on that side of the table and yeah. just uh, use speed, which now this the speed's not friendly. Mm -hmm. So what I mean by that is that you have to hit this so soft if you're going to just go two cushions that now if you drag the rail with the six, it doesn't drop, it hangs. Where if you go three rails of speed... I may consider coming back behind the eight here with low outside and that's, from behind it. That's no. probably the best choice is go ahead because then making the six balls better. You have a well, you kind of just can let the stroke out a little more, right? Yep. Um, if you cut the six in, you're taking on a really tough shot natural to where you could get in a position on the eight to where you have the ten as a very big issue. So speed's got to be crucial here for him to get pretty straight or at least straight enough to where he can draw and not hit the 10. Playing the three rail route. Yeah. And he's going to get that angle. He's actually going to do even better. 
He's going to get to where he can go forward off of this. I don't know if he can draw with the side pocket being there. Right. Maybe he draws over to the side rail and takes the cut on the nine. You know what I mean, Mark? Kind of the path the cue ball's on now. Yeah. Draw over below the side and take the cut on the nine. He just went and looked at that. Because going forward with top and side is a long ways to go to get on this nine ball. Oh, he decided to come across. Or no, he didn't. Well, he didn't. Yeah, he wanted to go across based well, on the way he hit it. Yeah, I know, but it was kind of in between, huh? The good thing is he's cueing nice and still a decent favorite to cut this in. Now, wow, if look at the camera, boy. It looks a lot thinner than <laughs> yeah. the overhead does. And if you don't introduce side spin on your cue ball with your tip, the scratch is in play, too. Absolutely. Which makes it when you have to put side spin on it, now you got a squirt effect. So He's in the middle, and he usually... It's going to take a great shot. Yep. Oh, wow. Fortunate in a couple ways on the miss. Didn't scratch after catching the point. Unless you don't move this one over very far, just all cue ball. Looks perfect. <laughs> or it's going to go past perfect, but still pretty darn good. Covered it up pretty nice. End rail to end rail. This is how you start in pro pool quite often. Yeah, he got, he got a piece of the ball there, it looks like. Covered up. I'm not offering what to do because I don't know. He's going, I think. No, he's not. He may have fluked it in. <clears throat> yeah, something is, because, uh, that, that, again, that's a little let up on the way down. Just it, a little bit. There just wasn't much of a shot. I think he was trying to get the nine ball all the way back to the end rail there. But that was tough business. That was a long way to make a hit, frozen to the rail, and then get the speed on the object ball right and the direction right. Gomez is about to take a two-game lead here. You know, looking at Fetter in the chair, he almost looks a little fatigued. 6-4. Gomez opens up a two-game two lead. lead. Six games to four after ten racks. See any players out there, Jeremy? Uh, four or five hundred is all, Mark. <laughs> we got record turnout here. Yeah. Efren Reyes is here. Yeah, Efren played uh, one pocket match earlier. It looked like he won. Josh, Josh Filler in a Banks match right now. A friend of mine, he, he was up uh, early yesterday and uh, got a chance to play Efren some for 25 a game. He only had time for a couple games. So of course he lost them both, but he said he wants to be wanted to play effort again. And effort said 7 a.m. tomorrow. And my buddy got up and he went down there and played him some more this morning. Oh, for, that's for great! <laughs> yeah, awesome. But and my buddy, he's not like he plays pretty well. You know, he's not a terrible player or nothing like that. So I mean, effort big, big, huge favorite, of course. But I think uh, effort recognized he wasn't a terrible player either and kind of liked um, uh -huh. some of the competition there. You know? Yeah. Because Efren likes it when you challenge his brain, that's for sure, the chess player and everything else. And probably a good warm-up for the one pocket for, for mm -hmm. Efren. Oh, yeah, he uh, loves to play. Yeah, the righty can, can reach this one. Nice open table to come two rails. May Could come between the eight and two, depending on how he wants to pocket the ball. The one's thick enough to do so, or he can come between the nine and two, which is most likely what he does. Oh, he hit it way thick. Way thick there, Mark. That's a huge shot with a two-game lead at six to four. <laughs> this one's, of course, long from over, but we have a seven and a nine thirty later on tonight.
Mm, well executed. Yeah, had to attack with a little inside English. Going to fall a little on the 50. Yeah, well, he's going to have to back cut it in the corner. Yeah, he's close enough to it. He could pinch it, I guess, with the draw. I don't think the side's really an issue. A little bit more of maybe missing the ball is the, more of the problem. He's looking at the cross corner. Wow. So this must have something to do with a little more security with the cue ball. I don't know. I kind of thought with you, Mark, he'd be cutting this ball, but, man, he banks so well. Last to, year's bank pool champion. Yeah, trying to use the, the eight as protection. That's why he didn't come to the long side for the five. He played short side on the five because of the eight ball. You were saying, Mark? Uh, last year's bank pool champion oh, here. Yeah. So, kind yeah. Kind of robbed but, it too, right? <laughs> well, <laughs> like, his, yeah. He just hit the ball so pure. But an off-angle cross-corner bank, even the most routine of which, it's very easy to miss. Yeah, especially he was definitely playing the speed to have a two-way shot. So that throws in, you know, yeah. not your, that's usually not your most comfortable way to make the bank. I love it that Shane sits ringside and studies, you know, and that, I think Shane's kind of a mentor for the younger guys, too. I think he probably admires and respects what Gorse is developing. Wow, really nice hit. Even if he gives up a look, still very, very nice hit and good speed. Got to make him come with it, you know. Tremendous. Well, Shane watches more than you think he does, you know, if, if you're one of those players out there. Of course, there's certain players he really wants to mm -hmm. wants to watch a little more, but, you know, with the Moscone Cup, talking about some young guys, some junior things going on, you know, with yeah. SVB and whatnot. He sits there and he sneaks in some peeks on, on all the players. I think he's got to catch the five a little bit, so don't let that uh, bother you. Just bear down on the two. Oh, he caught it too thick. Overcut the two to the right mark and run the cue ball between the eight five back down behind the ten. Yeah, that's it's not an easy hit though, because it's easy to overcut this one. You got a funny angle. Yeah. You can you can run into trouble here. There's clutter balls. You got the it's going to take a good shot. He's going Either after way. this. I don't know about this. You can make this and not get shape. You don't want to be shooting something like this without shape. Yeah, that was an in-between stroke. Didn't know exactly what was going to happen with the yeah. cue ball, so you get a little in-between. Well, and then he supported it. You know, he it was the in-between decision. He wasn't committed, and then the in-between stroke. And yeah, no coincidence there, right? How that happens. He's got to kick to that side rail with draw. We've got to take a little gamble here. Maybe send the two at the 10 or that corner pocket. So you'll hit in a little deeper. You see how he's aiming to hit a little deeper. That way the draw takes a little bit. Maybe he can draw off the two, bring the cue ball back towards the five. Key to this is make sure you get the draw on the ball. Sometimes when you're kicking like this, You'll overhit it, and the ball oh. draw really doesn't take a whole lot, you know? Yeah. So you're saying off the top of the two and kick it back down towards the one rail to the See five. See how he's hitting it yes. towards there and bring the cue ball yeah. back? Well, you have to hit deeper inside to create the angle to draw off the two right. coming right, backwards, right. right? Yeah. And that was the best percentage, I think. Yeah. So. But pretty heady call there, Jeremy, because... You know, when they're out like that, you, a lot of times people are not playing to have the cue ball respond in that way yeah, either. Yeah. So. Well, if you're secure with the hit, you know, I tell people, once you're secure with the hit and you know the route, those two things, right, mm -hmm. that's when you try to add a little more to the shot when you're kicking at the ball. When you absolutely, almost like you'd bet your life you're going to hit it, right? Yeah. So then you go over and look at the rail. Well, if I was shooting from here, how would I hit this? And but now if it's the other way around, the hit's the most important, of course, kind of ignore, um, you know, shooting a design shot, I guess. So right. Much. All right, should just go forward. Probably uses the rail for a little bounce. Oh, 
Well, that's a nice stun shot. Wasn't from, it? I mean, that wasn't yeah. like... Uh, Beautiful. Yeah. I mean, that was on the other half of the table to get the speed so correct. There it is, 7 4 now. Roberto Gomez, Gomez in Gomez front. A three game lead now. Seven games to four, heading into rack 13. Fedor will have the break. Ran into my old pal Ray Schultz today. He said that Nick Varner was coming later on. Today? That's what he said. Oh, well, hopefully. Uh, yeah. caref careful with that weather out there. He's not coming from too far, obviously. But. Nick still in Owensboro. Oh, Ray Schultz. Didn't he move from Owensboro? No. No. No, no. I thought he was going to take another job last time I talked to oh, him, no, which was a few years ago. But Yeah, maybe he didn't take it because oh, okay. I know he's there. Okay. Maybe he took it and came he's back. He's a funny guy. Yeah, I love Ray. Yeah. He was always the funny guy out there uh, in the mid to late 90s. Big tournaments. And he could play as well. Oh, yeah. All right, it's been a long time since he had that hit on the one. <laughs> and Actually, the dry break yeah, still. Yeah, it leaves you. You make, you finally make a good hit and get nothing. The one does cut. It's thin, but usually when the guys are close to it, they're somewhat willing to take on this shot. It looks like a pretty full pocket. He's just going to come out of the corner, two rails. He doesn't want to flirt with the three, so not a high ball here. Just oh, he did it with inside. Overcut it, but wow, I thought he was doing it with outside a little bit. Two cushions, you know. Hmm. All right, he can stop and play a three rail angle off the three to come up in between the seven nine, getting on the four, which is ideal. Ooh, ooh. I thought he would hold. You see the angle I'm talking about, Mark, yeah. with the high left, just cutting the three in the side, coming this, up above the five, in between the five and nine? He was trying to improve that route a little bit, but then he over-improved it. Yeah. Now he's going to have to float this in, coming two rails uh, and landing between the seven and nine. Same position we talked about, a lot more difficult of a task. And I think he has to spin this with left. Oh, is he looking at cutting it in the corner? What's yeah, that's what I was saying. Coming oh, okay. past the side between the seven okay, and nine, gotcha two now, rails. Okay, gotcha now, yeah. Yeah, he took the... Like that. Squeaks it in. <laughs> Just, hey, I liked it because it gave us more of a sweat as yeah. a viewer, right? Yeah, we want to get our money's worth. Right. Yes. Now looking for a four-game lead. He still got some work to do here. Absolutely, but, yeah. but in a good spot. Going to get on top of this. Just stops. Enough time and... <laughs> Again, make sure you get through this. You got a lot of room to come across and bounce off the second rail. Mm -hmm. You don't want to get a little kick on the ball, right? So, yeah, looks to me like he needs the bridge, but he's going to do it with a four foot long bridge. Nice. Perfect. Yeah, nice clean contact on the object ball. Now, a little preference. You want to come backwards or forwards, both are playable. Kind of like backwards myself, a little more than forwards. Get you a little more straightish on the seven. Get you back easy on the eight. I can't tell which one he's playing. Oh, he played straight stun. That's okay, too. It's actually a shot you need to really have in your bag for a lot of little different reasons. Part of the reason is you don't have to hit it as hard, which makes the pocket more forgiving, and just let the cue ball go on a direct route. Yeah, that shot there, fairly routine with it, but sometimes you have to go deeper down the table, and when nerves are high, if you know the shot, it's mm -hmm. a lot better than putting a lot of side spin, whether going forward or backwards, right? Mm -hmm. So, oh, he's trying to come past the side here, trying to get the ideal angle. I don't think it's necessary. He could just kind of check it over and then shoot the eight with a touch of inside. Oh, see, that was why I come past the side there. He could literally have held his ball maybe three inches over and been plenty full on the eight to work the rock back for the nine. You just could have come to the side rail and just bounce out and follow. I mean, just 
Yeah. Mm-hmm. But I think he could have held it like three inches over. I don't, there wasn't a whole lot of angle on that set. Yeah, right. He was forcing something that wasn't there and adding difficulty that sometimes he can connect on that, and it looks great when you do it, but now the it looks premium, awful. You know, he's yeah. trying for the premium on the 8. Premium is kind of like when it's necessary, needed, or when it's super easy, of course. All right, we've seen a lot of these overcut, especially when they need speed going back and forth. And to that pocket, by the way. Oh, he hit it thick. I think he was lucky yeah, that one fell. What a good hit. Yeah. That, to rattle it in there at that speed means it almost had to be perfect to begin with. Well, that's another one. I always kind of look at the stroke really helped it as well. Like, not perfect contact on the seven, but he, uh, he finished his stroke, and I think, I think that opens the pocket up a little bit. Boy, what a huge game. <laughs> seven oh, yeah. five or eight, eight yeah. to four. And Roberto breaking in the next game as well. All right, Gorse now grabbing that game. Five. Again, they're in rack Gorse, 13. Seven for and Gomez. Gorse gets one back. Gomez seven won this event in 2018. Game advantage, but Roberto Gomez will have the break heading into rack 14. of uh, Cincinnati Bengal fans in this area, <laughs> and rightfully so. And They are doing a little number to Buffalo at the moment. Going into the fourth quarter, they're ahead by a couple touchdowns. And snowing. Yeah. Well, it's not going to be a repeat of last year's Super Bowl with the Rams not making the playoffs, but Cincinnati was there. They, they look, looking good to have a shot to make it back. All right, Roberto's got to shake that mistake off. He's looked really good since, you know, after the first couple racks of the match. Yeah. Square hit that we've been seeing in the last several breakoffs, but well, and the spin too. He had yeah. overspin on it, so it took away the impact. Sitting here ringside, there's Jim Henry from Big Time Billiards sitting right next to Phil Wyndham, Chattanooga Bayer Club. Yeah, both pool room owners. I'll be over in Chattanooga Bayer Club in about a month. A little over, I guess. Does he still have the one downtown? Mm-hmm. Okay. Oh, yeah. You were talking about Buddy Hall. I played him uh, first time I ever beat him in a match, actually. I was there at Chattanooga Billiard Club. Okay, trying to tie the 5-3 up, knowing he had to roll out to an open one. Here, you just... Is it too thin? It's too thin, actually, to try and get him behind the 7 and the 1 up by the 3. I don't think that's possible. I don't know what he's playing here. He was trying to play that shot. It was possible. So kind of a light rollout, in my opinion, from Fetter. Yeah. Because, I mean, that three was always there, right? He moved the five over, but. Now he's put himself in a big hole. It's going to be hard to hit this. Yeah, the thing is, when you have him on the end rail on the long shot, you just don't want him to be able to do it naturally with a roll. You know, if he has to spin, maybe swerve the ball, hair would spin and create something, hey, that's one thing or another. But you just don't want him to be able to level out and, and tattoo the speed and put All you right. in a bad spot. Well, this is a real bad spot. He's going to have to manufacture these angles, which is uh, super tough. Yeah, I don't know. if I, I understand why he's kicking this way. 
a uh, little more value, but he's got. I think he's got a kick to the to the yeah that way right there. I mean, there's too much traffic the other way. This one here breaks open the three five. Maybe don't get a safe as often, but at least you probably secure the hit at this point, anyways. The thing is, Roberto froze him right. Yeah, so he did now a good he's job. Gotta jack up. Huh? Can't dig on the ball. A good hit. And he knew it was going to tear open the 3-5 and good chance of not getting a safety, but it's better than giving up ball in hand, I think. Does the 2 have the pocket mark where he can get at? <laughs> no. The 3, the 1's tight <laughs> Maybe as well. Maybe back into the side pocket would be, you know, the 2. How's he get there? No, exactly. That's... Can he go top inside between the 5-9 and then back out between the 5-10 for the 2 in the side? Is that a possibility? Is he sizing up the combination on the 2-10? Well, yes, with the with the safety in mind, but yes. Yeah, where's the safety though? I don't really see the he safety. Just, I think he's drawing back, just yeah, get length. I don't know if that really gets you safe or not. No, I'm I'm saying yeah, he wants draw distance. back to the in rail unit right. or something. Okay, yeah. that makes sense. I thought you meant like behind the four or something like that. So he's attacking. The thing is, he could stitch him. He didn't have to attack. Oh, oh he, he had a pocket, it. and okay. he moved the four and. Out in the position, what a nice creative play there. Well, I'm sorry. I didn't think that went by there at all from my perspective. No, me either. <laughs> That's why we started off talking about how do you get shape on the two. Meanwhile, yeah. it went right by the eight. He had shape. <laughs> well, I'll tell you what. Just needs to bear down here. Surprised he drew back that far. Thought he would just play for the five in the other pocket, but this is okay. He can... He can stretch and reach this. Now he's actually better, right? Because he can pull the ball out to the middle. He didn't get there. He let up. Yeah, and he was trying to play at real short position coming across to me, which would have been another stretch probably for the righty. Because he, he's not going to go as far as the 10, right? Because then you're flirting. Surprised he didn't pull that ball out to the center yeah. of the table, right? And now he's going to play a very thin back cut, but he's close. He's got uh, close proximity to the object ball, so that makes it play a little bit easier. But can he avoid the nine easily? No. Well, maybe he can go inside spin. Oh, inside! I think he can avoid it. I'd like to come around it myself. Yeah, like that. Oh, oh he missed the five. So little things getting the best of Roberto here late. When he's in a winning position uh, in the match, he had a chance to go up 8-4 in the last. It's going to be the soft kick. I think, anyways. What do you think, Mark? Soft yeah, kick, three like, rails underneath? That's what it looks like he's trying for. He wants to go to the third cushion and then lightly land on the five. You can see him kind of calculating something, but there's still a lot of feel, though, because you have to know how the table's playing. The diamonds and all that, it's just a great reference. You still have to play. Look at this speed. Look at the speed on this. What yeah. a shot. What a shot. <laughs> World-class pool. Just to survive. Now, he's going to end up a little bit, you know, ugly after the shot, but, yeah, but he got through that one. Yeah, probably kick, though. Well, no matter what, it's not going to be worse. Because he can't get behind the six, I don't think. He has to contain the five. He has to make sure the five doesn't get turned loose. Oh, he did get behind the six. How good is this? Touche, Mr. Gorse. Touche. Wow. Wow. Most impressive. Is he going to go two on this one? I thought he would just go one rail cross underneath, <laughs> catching the bottom rail, uh, using the long side rail there. I don't think the six has got that cut off. Jacking up two yeah. cushions. Yeah, warp but that into makes the... it lengthen when you're jacked up, though. That's the problem. You see how much longer it's going? He's a little more you... giddy up. <laughs> yeah, because yeah. you're putting pressure down on the ball a little more. That's why I thought he would kick it to the side rail with a little tip of right, maybe. Mm-hmm. Now here you have to you hate to play a bank, but then also sometimes the safety doesn't have enough value. No, he's three railing it around. I understand, but yeah. I'm saying you you want to play offense so oh, bad. Oh, absolutely, yeah. 
Clearly you oh, don't he know. didn't get the kiss on the eight that he wanted. I don't know if this is any good, Mark. Luckily, the seven's got... Oh, he did get the snooker. Okay. A lot of times those guys want a little bounce off, off that eight ball coming off the rail there. Mm -hmm. There's a good camera work there. You can see the eight definitely has him. So now it's a two-cushion kick, and this is a real interesting one. Uh, this is one that should be in your repertoire. He's you always, one rail. I can't believe it. He's not kicking two to come oh. across. Ten. You want to kick two rails and come across the five, sending the cue ball at the eight. That's kind of the natural one that most of the guys would play. Well, you don't get separation here. Well, he's trying, he to, he's trying to fluke something in or make some lucky happen. Not as much of a direct shot, but... He, he, he nailed it pretty good. So he did get separation. Yeah, the two the two reeler was there, though. Not one they're going to pass up. Cue ball he, behind the nine here, Mark? Yeah, that'd be great. I think it's fairly natural as well. And I'll tell you what, I thought about it. When you go look from behind the nine where you want, these guys never miss their mark on that shot. You notice how he just got down yes. on it, right? Yeah. When they go look behind it, it just makes the brain a little better, a little more precise, and these guys just hardly ever miss their mark on that type of shot. That was a bit casual. Yeah. And that's an easy mistake to do because you mm -hmm. feel it's like pretty routine. but mm -hmm. And it is a decently routine shot for these guys, but they just never miss it when they go through their little it's process. It's like you put a little more data into the Absolutely. computer and then Absolutely. somehow you subconsciously just get behind the nine better. I agree. Hey, you don't want to over-focus. You know, the routine itself is about mild information. You know, you want to gather a little bit of mild information, route and destination, where the cue ball is going to settle, you know, yeah. little lines here and there, and then you swing the cue. Yeah. Boy, of course, came up with a nice, long, clean pot there. Boom, right in the middle of the pocket. Yeah, and that, you know, that kind of missed safety, though, is as upsetting as a missed ball. For sure. Yeah. I mean, now you're letting him back, and he's feeling good after making that first shot. He's getting some momentum back. Gorse to zeroing in on this five ball. It's like a two cushion route back to the center of the table. Yeah, and it looks like he has that real level cue, but it's not really it. He just addresses it there and then drops the tip a little bit at impact when he goes uh, for the draw stroke. This is uh, in between. I think he has to go inside spin here. Yeah, he wanted another foot or two yeah. out of the cue ball. That was definitely a good call there, Mark. He's got to make sure he catches ball first here. Make sure he gets a lot out of the inside English. And this is where you don't want to overhit it as well. You want to make sure you give it time to grab that side spin. Yeah, really nice. Ooh. He might have hit the object ball a little thicker than he anticipated there in that flattened that cue ball at some. Maybe. I think he kind of <laughs> overhit it as well. You Like I said, you really want to hit that you don't want to baby it, of course, but there's that speed to where it really dives off of uh, yeah. with that first part of the English. Of course, head right on the line of the nine to the pocket. He really wants to make sure he gets this ball down. Yeah, and this is where you go ahead and come above the ten a little further, mm -hmm. um, just making sure you get that nice stroke on the nine. Oh, it's thick. I don't know if it's going to slide in. It did. Oh, boy. But that's where I see him, just like I said earlier a couple times, I feel like a little bit of a let up there on the downswing is and what it felt like. you can like. see where the cue ball position is. Had he hit that clean, the cue ball would have been what you said, yeah. a little further, further ahead. just to make sure he hit the And the thing is, to me, in my opinion anyway, I don't Here think he's aiming off there really from a foot a away on the nine. I think he had, like I said, a hair of a let up on the swing. And so that creates a little more grab on the cue ball on the object. Ball, I think, yeah. and, uh, Great matchup. I, I rarely Only ever blame the aim from these the guys. Now, if they're eight or nine feet Shane away, I, I think it could get distorted match. a little that bit. All of us could, but not from a couple of feet, especially with a guy that has such a solid routine getting yeah. into the ball. Well, 7 6 now. Gorse got it out of tough rack there, and it was all from an errant safety. 
Yeah, and that's, that's two racks in a row that he could have kept that lead a little larger. Maybe even gotten to the hill. These guys are going for a new rack, it looks like. Really, a lot of that was set up from Gorse kicking ability on those kick safeties in that rack. You right. know, remember that long two railer that came around behind it, and then then yeah. he played that one railer that we didn't recommend, but he tagged it so square, it did get separation, and a lot of things happened in that rack. Yeah, Roberto missing that safety behind the nine, Ugh. but then Feder, you know, coming coming with that five ball shot after what has been a a bit of a struggle for Feder in this match. Right. And he, if just say that the Roberto gets the safety there and then Feder has to concentrate and burn up a bunch of energy trying to hit the object ball rather than him shooting the five ball straight in. Yeah. It's like body blows in a boxing match. Finally, that takes a toll on a guy when you are always completely focused just trying to, you know, survive. Yeah, a little chink in the armor. <laughs> kind of like, oh, wow, I got a shot. 7-6 now. Right, watch out Course that right breaking. side pocket. All right, that's better. Much better break. Another dry one, though, and he's like, how does this happen now? Hit the most inopportune moment in this match. Well, he broke from the right and hit the left. That's the one we hadn't seen the entire day. Like, what do they call that, the Brooklyn side? Mm-hmm. In bowling, they right. call that. Well, a lot of guys, the uh, first time I heard it was, I think, Tony Robles used that for pool as well. Oh, really? Yeah. Okay. Of course, he's from that area. Maybe that yeah. had a little something to do with it. <laughs> All right, funny. I don't think he can get too close to the two unless he gambles moving the cue ball around the table. Oh, he had a really nice stroke there, checking it up with inside. Wow, nice shot, Roberto. Same thing here. Can't get too close to the three, even though he did get close to the two there. Just draw one row out between the five seven here, Mark. Oh, yeah, I'd like to get the cue ball back where it's at now. Yeah. The fours over the pocket, getting a decent shot at the three really kind of opens the rack up. Ah, ooh, I thought it was a little thick. The five's near the four. Is this in between? Like natural's kind of going one rail at the seven, so he has to address the cue ball, maybe pull it two rails or maybe a hair of inside. I don't know. I think topspin gets the job done. Well, he's looking. At, yeah. Okay, so if you go topspin, you want to go soft speed. Yeah, you don't want, from that because distance, Because otherwise it makes though, that seven you know? big if you don't. Yeah, from that distance, though, right? He's putting inside just to make sure. He did so. And the one thing about the inside or... Uh, versus the two rails. Both of them, you get to let your stroke out a little bit more. Um, but the two rails, they could get away from you. The one rail with the inside, if you execute, you know you're getting shape, right? Mm hmm. Right. And you got a little funny here. A little falling away from the six to the bottom rail. A little close to the rail to draw. So he's got to work the ball a little bit around the six. Good thing the seven near the side. It's got to go. That's got to go. And good shot. Just enough. Yeah, real good shot. Well, it's amazing how always that opposite pocket's not available when you do make that mistake. How, like, the ten, six doesn't go by the ten when you end up a little light on that mm -hmm. stroke there. I had to learn that one a few times the hard way. <laughs> oh. Oof. That, it's almost like he twitches on the last delivery or something. Everything was looking great on those practice swings, and then we shot, it looked like his wrist flicked out or something that. Well, he's got it, you know, not there on the short ones, but if you watch it, most of his cueing shots, ones that he, he gets a little more through the ball or, or a little more power, he has a unique takeaway to me. He cuts, starts off kind of slow, and then it gets a little more rhythm, like a little hesitation there and then a little more rhythm in the middle. Mm -hmm. Here's the same. It should be a little slower on the take, and then, like I said, the rhythm changes just a little bit in the middle. Huge game here for Roberto and one heck of an out, in my opinion. 8-6. Yeah. A nice quick out by Gomez. And extends his lead to 8-6. Looks like Gomez is trying to secure an extra break here. And, I mean, a uh, player timeout.
Huh. What's going on here? Well, Roberto has requested a second timeout. And was granted? It was. Wow. That's well, what happens is if you say, you know, you're not feeling great health wise, <laughs> sometimes the referee can grant, well, then, you know, he's not a doctor. What can he say? So, anyway, that's what we have is a short player timeout. You know, I shouldn't have said it like that, like and it was granted. It's not like out of line by any means or anything like that. And certainly, Fetter's not going to try and question it. Roberto Gomez is back now. He's setting up the rack. The score is 8-6. Gomez in front of Gorst. And there's a good look of Superman preparing to break. Yeah, and the funny thing is, you know, at the beginning of the match, I, th I I'd mentioned, and I still think this probably, I, I, I definitely do, that I thought the break was the biggest separation between the two players, even though I thought Feder was, you know, a little better in most categories, but not by much. And it's been the break shot, and then here we go, ironically, a scratch at a very bad time and a 110 combination of some sort, maybe a 210. But really, overall, Roberto's had the best of the break in this match so far. Yeah, I think he's going to play the 110. Yeah, not why not? fool around with it. Yeah. He's got ball in hand. Either are fine. I, I mean, you couldn't really argue someone that wanted to pocket the one and play yeah. some type of 210 as well. Yeah. I play the 110, but... And just because you have ball in hand, you know, you don't figure to get much better. You yeah, could get absolutely. worse. Oh, Federer, he will not complain about this shot. Oh, he's jacking up. Why is he doing this? It's surprising to me. Me, personally, I don't shoot it that way. Is that because there wasn't much space between the cues maybe, and the object ball? Maybe. Maybe you wanted to put a little more pace in. You want to roll it there. Eight and to seven. And it was just instinct, I guess. Yeah. Eight seven now. That was a quick one. Yeah, I think if I had felt like I had to shoot it jacked up like that, Mark, yeah. I'd probably pocket the one and play the 210 mm -hmm. carry. Mm -hmm. I know. I get that, too. He went up in the air big time with the Q, and Q that's, stick. Yeah, that's what I was saying with the ball in hand. You could, you know, set it perfect so you could just ease it on over there. Yeah, I thought he could roll it, but, of course, he's at the table. And those guys see it the best. Hence why we're in the booth. <laughs> well, and, and he was successful. I don't yeah. like to criticize a successful shot. Eight to seven. We got action here. Looky here. Horse is breaking. Well, well, things starting to come around with our score graphic back on the screen. Eight to seven. Okay, it's been a number of problems on the break. Oh, good square hit. I don't know if he's going to make a ball. but Yeah, he's going to get a little upset of nothing uh -oh. going in now. That's like the third time. It's a three in a row. Three in a row he's had it. He's lost the cue ball once in this match. If he could reach this, he could spin it heavy enough with outside to maybe spread the cue ball between the 6-9 for a cut. But without being able to reach it, that's a difficult shot with the yeah. bridge or a, a long extension with all that spin. Right. When you load it up with that kind of spin, then you've yeah. got to aim it quite a bit thinner. And then with the bridge, you have no feel for how much squirt you're imparting. You hard for him not to attack, though, right? He's going to knock this around. Yeah, I was going to say, hard for him not to attack. A jelly roll, no. almost. It's a pretty sweet stroke, though, with the bridge yeah. top inside. And another player who swings righty but plays with the bridge lefty. Okay, the four, six, and nine. This is where you spread the cue ball with a lot of left spin over behind the six. And just... Find that spot to where the four, six, and nine give you a huge area to place the two. He double kissed it. He didn't hit it directly. 
double kiss that ball. I think that was a little fortune there, Mark. You normally don't play a double kiss. Yeah. Well, I don't think he was playing a double yeah. kiss. It just happened to be. Took the pace out of the cue ball and the trajectory to get it behind the six. And he's got a little sliver of the two. The three's tough, so he's got a few options here. He doesn't have to really try to get a devastating safety or any or any snooker, really. Oh, he had a lot of the two ball, huh? Yeah. That's where that one pocket comes in a little bit, getting a little better touch for those kind of safeties coming across the ball, going upstairs with the cue ball. The kick between the 310 here. It's a good thing about this kick is the cue ball should continue forward. I think you have to mass A a little bit. I think you have to arc it to get it. Well, maybe not. He's comfortable just leveling out. Oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah, he can get way more real. Yeah, and he was trying to play over by the four with the cue ball, for sure. Great result. No reason to play that speed otherwise. Yeah, this got weird. If he can't kick between the nine and six back underneath the two rails. Uh, I guess he goes long rail by the seven with spin. Tell you another one that's not too bad, really, the way this ball's sitting is three rails. Kicking right. to the right diamond between the 10 8 and then coming another yep. two rails at the two ball with some speed. The reason being is if you cut it at all, the cue ball will come off the two, right? Mm -hmm. And come towards the six and the four and all that, fall that direction. Maybe you get a little fortunate. This one here, he can make it though. Kicking to the left of the seven with just a hint of right English. Really Beautiful nice. hit. Really nice. And he's going to get a little love. Yeah, yeah reward. Deserved. Looks like he's going to dig down with low. Yeah. And this ain't a bad one to try and come across as well. You, hard to argue either way he went at it. Mm-hmm. But if you hit a high ball and aim a little, you know, shorter of there and come across it, a lot mm -hmm. of good things could have happened, I'll tell you. Yeah, and then that puts the cue ball down on the end of the table where the two ball is. Exactly. Two ball back on the end of the table where the cue ball is, but the two ball would maybe be move over to by the, the center. six. Yeah, yeah, right. And the thing is, recognize that the three is difficult. So why you want to put the two by the three when you're kicking in that direction that he decided to kick in? Yeah. Take a dead aim. Uh, may have just got there. Whew, look at that mm -hmm. camera view. What a, what a good one it is. Yeah, it was kind of, kind of from behind Fetter. That camera view showed us a lot. Doesn't seem too unhappy, though. Mm -mm. No, he feels like he can handle it. He might be going beyond this. Yeah, I was going to say. That's a good result. Well, he can kick between the 6-9, luckily, because uh, I expect uh, Roberto to put him behind the 6-9 with the cue ball and have the three track up one rail behind the 7. Not a hard shot here at all, like that. Not hard at all. Another great result. We've seen some good tactical exchanges today, that's for sure. Well, I think the 10-footer, just these guys play that way anyways. They're not going to give in. But the 10-footer kind of makes you feel like you can really get into that part of the game because you get a little extra defense behind it with the distance of the table and the difficulty. Yeah. So, added value. Yeah. All right, two rails behind. This is the one, again, probably a little lighter speed for me, trying not to get the three all the way down table, just a good hit. Yeah, that's what I would have worried about. Probably kicking deeper with a little lighter speed maybe, but 
And with that happens. speed, it shortens it or uh, doesn't allow it to arc. Yeah, three five combo here, Mark. That way you don't have to track up and down the table. You mm -hmm. just shoot the four six later on. That makes a lot of sense because the four is down by the six. If you get rid of the five here, you can easily get the position on the three. Yes. Now, smart shot, not babying peachy. it either, making sure the three comes up for a little angle. Yeah, it's just peachy. See, and that's another, you know, kind of preference thing, right? Like, I've never seen Buddy Hall kind of shoot that kind of shot with the straight draw, you know, right. kind of killing it. He would always roll off of that ball with right English. Me uh, too. Yeah. yeah. And just think your touch going into the places you really want to go is a little better with a rolling ball. So He's gotten straight. He hit yeah. the wrong side of the pocket. <laughs> I thought he may have <laughs> missed it at first. <laughs> Just because of knowing our Roberto's, you know, mm -hmm. like all of us, we make a little look at the ball when we're in Dallas. Yeah. You know? And this has got that little hint where the cue ball kind of wants to go into the nine ball if you hit the heart of the pocket. So now you got to manipulate this pocket. He's in a bad spot here for such a short, easy shot. He's looking behind him. Oh, he was checking his uh, shot clock, I see. Right. Can he slow draw this with a little inside? I think inside? he's bounce draw, it looks like. Oh, nope. straight draw. Slow draw. Okay. He had a good line then. Still rubbed the nine, though, going by. Did there. it? Really? I thought so. Oh, yeah. wow. And he got that much out of it still, huh? I'm probably wrong. No, I mean. <laughs> the, the, it was close. No the, matter uh, what. the thing that will amaze you about pool, if you know, you stick around playing it a year, you'll see the most paper-thin hit on a ball that you wouldn't even think is imaginable. Right? Yeah. And the cue ball still move or not even lose its line, really. It's almost like when you have one angle on a shot that's very slim. That was a good shot right yeah. there. And you try to shoot it hard, and you end up creating the other angle somehow yeah. and still making the ball. You're like, how is that even possible? All right, two rails out. He likes that. Maybe one rail with inside. Hmm. Yeah, you need a little more. This one here, he's got to hit the pocket. But big game. Uh, I think he feels great about it. Okay, I wish we could replay that. That here's what happened. He he got back halfway slow, like we were saying, and then he changed speeds. It's like what a he shifting does, gear. That's what he does with his back yeah. swing, though. Comes back very slow and controlled, and then it does ch have a change in the middle. That was and, huge. Uh, Boy, it's uh, weird. It's almost like he second guessed himself mid stroke. That's four. that's pretty common. That's not a not a mistake either. It's just kind of what he does with the backswing. Yeah. Stats Arena. If you want to check out the boy, oh boy, the really this one, it's there. a good one. Eight yeah, to if you'll eight. notice also, and Gomez will have the break. kind of slid towards the hole instead of kind of rotating towards the hole. And what happens there it just makes a ball that wants to stand up a little easier. It's a little more grabby at the pocket. Now it's so easy to lose your intense focus on the accuracy of this hit and maybe lose the cue ball, trying yeah. to do something well, too much. And his last break, uh, you know, was his, he had a couple so-so breaks at the beginning, but then he found it, and then his last break he had a scratch. So a lot of the pressure back on Roberto, it seems. No, it's, Roberto's, you know, been ahead the whole way after we got started. Yeah, you can see a little frustration on that strike. Good ball. Good break. Got a shot. I love this. He's hmm. got to float the two, but it's not too bad. Break demon speed. 22.3. That might be about the most powerful break we've seen this That's week. That's what I say. He unloaded <laughs> a little frustration in that Yeah. One. But it hit him great. I mean, great. He did. All right, don't be too tentative. You can go a little more with the cue ball here. That way you get a nice clean contact on the two. Is he trying entertaining going around somewhere? I know he's thin, but it looks he can even come above the five mark and cut the four. I don't know about going around the table here. 
Well, I don't think that's the right shot going around the table consistency wise. I think well, you'll get more yeah. yield out of what you're saying. Just let the cue ball come to the center of the table. He's trying to go inside the, the seven eight twice on the way in and on the way out. Like that. He caught a little piece of the eight. Pretty fortunate there to get back around. Well, what a shot. Yeah. My goodness. Yeah, you know, a great hit for sure. Yeah. But I think maybe also a little frustration may have gotten the best of him there on, on what looked like a not a bad decision, but maybe a little suspect. We'll see. He's perfect now. He can just draw over nice and tidy, get even a little closer to the six. And again, you can handle a lot. No reason to get any kind of missable on the six ball. Mm. You can see he's not quite staying as still. Mm -hmm. No, he flinched that yeah. bridge hand. Yeah. yeah. He didn't like that. Well, really, if you look from 7-4, he could have ended the match. I mean, he's had an opportunity to win every game since 7-4. Well, I say that. He scratched on the break once to give up a combination on the 110. But, but we it was understand a what you're saying. Yeah. He's, he's, he's had a lot of opportunities to be way out there. Okay. Looks like he found his cape here for Superman. Regained the lead with a break and run out. Yeah, really nice break in it. A little bit of a gamble on that first shot, but it sure paid off. This would be his third break and run out of the set. Nice break and run for Gomez. <laughs> Has the lead still nine to For eight. Roberto, I know exactly how he feels. We'll you won all nine of your games, games and half of Fetter's games, right? Here, right? Hmm. Yeah, we got action, nine eight. Gomez in front. <laughs> He's talking to the cameraman, shaking his head, side to side, getting some water. Been a pretty long match with all the safety battles and exchanges they've had. And, of course, when you have those dry breaks on such a tough table, right? We've had a handful, probably four, I think, maybe five. Mm-hmm. That's going to... Then towards uh, a little longer matches. And as the days wear on, the table gets tighter. Maybe Absolutely. that's contributing to. Well, we see it in every tournament. You know, as you get more towards what they call the business end of the event, where everyone's starting to get in the money and it's, every match is worth more. Even though we have a shot clock, you'll see a little more time taken. Yeah, he's really struggling with a little bit of the hit on the one. And I say really just because he just doesn't. Usually miss hit it very often. Mm -mm. The one filtered up over the corner pocket, but the seven slightly in the way, and this is not an easy position play. No, and good thing the one's close enough. He can cheat the pocket a little bit to create a little easy movement on the cue ball going to the side rail. Right. Because of the energy, the physics of it, the cue ball's going down table and then to make it redirect, and so you want to use the object ball rather than spin if you can do it that way. Yeah, he may even be able to float off of it instead of stunning. We'll you just see. want to get to the center here. Yeah, nothing. He didn't need to be close because that's too dangerous. Yeah, the light stun right there too, which I think is used more in today's game than it was years ago on the on the heavier felt. Uh, mm -hmm. It seems like to me, and the and, mm -hmm. the and the heavier pool balls here today helps that as well. Well, I think the more precise cloth, you know, is really the contributing factor because. The other cloth, it didn't hold spin over there, so you couldn't use light spin ever. You wouldn't have yeah, it when you yeah. get there. But it, this one seems to release good as well. You know, the Simonis, the, the factor of both those things you were talking about, carrying yeah. the spin to the ball, right? Right. And then it releasing a little bit better as well. And I guess it releases better because it carries the spin further. I guess they kind of all go hand in hand. And it's so um, consistent. I mean, you can judge it, you know, and days of yesteryear it wasn't quite as nice like that sometimes you even on a shot like that you'd have to attack the two ball with your with your cue ball knowing that you might not come out of it right it's kind of like the top inside when you're a little shallow on the angle i think that's used way more today than it ever was years ago with the thicker felt 
you, you'd be like you'd always worry about maybe it hugging and falling the ball in right. or just not responding very well so you shot from the rail or near it a lot and you had to shoot it harder with right. the inside spin and then now your squirt is greater and now you're missing balls yes i agree all right he's gotten pretty premium here enough angle to move it over easily the eights very accessible so he doesn't have to get such a desired angle on the seven but i think again try to get to where it's not a real missable ball okay a little light of what he wanted so now he's got to make a decision do i go forward past the 10 that's the smart play no reason to draw the ball near the side or the 10 ball if you get straight, he draw, just holds it or draws back a couple inches. Mm -hmm. but, but here, I think he's got to go forward. Yeah, just roll the foot, you know, to yeah. the rail and foot back out. That yeah. should be fine for him. Half a tip of right, probably. Trying to do something extra. See, but he'll stun it versus, you know what I mean? He that had enough light room. stun again. He recognized yeah. he had enough room. That keeps him, you know, another six inches closer to the eight which means his speed control and accuracy has improved. So yeah, it's justified. You know, for sure, and he's good at that shot to where it's a little preference. Again, watching Buddy so often, I don't think he shoots it that way. I think he rolls it with a hair of right mm -hmm. English and makes it check a little with the English and takes a little further. It's just mm -hmm. preference, you know. And you're doing a lot of the same things when you do it the way you like it. So And Buddy didn't always have Simone's to work with either. So well, that too, that yeah. too. But, I mean, I don't think Buddy was – as, as, as a much around the stun as some of the guys that we see today. And you think that probably has a direct connection a little bit with the European uh, than being European. But the thing is that people make a, a big uh, mistake on is when they talk about filler, oh, he likes to stun the ball. He, you know, they're so good at stunning the ball and and Fetter as well, is they don't really use the heavy stun a lot. Uh, that's the one that amateurs start to use a lot. causes a lot of problems with yeah. some balls. I don't think we've had a hill-hill match yet, have we? No, we haven't. <laughs> a retaliatory yeah, break and run out by Gorse. 9-9 nine, nine is our score. Arena. Race to two now. Nine, Race to nine. two. Moving into rack 19. <laughs> this wow. is a hard fought contest. Yeah, yes, it is. And Cincinnati has advanced in Buffalo by the score 27 to 10. Wow. Buffalo in a home playoff game only scores 10 points. That's pretty impressive. Of course, it was a snowstorm, it looked like. I always think that Buffalo might have been the most, uh, the gr the greatest, you know, team ever to go to the Super Bowl. What was it, four times in a row or three? Uh, four, I believe. Yeah. I yeah. mean, there's never been a team go there, and then they lost all of them. Yeah, they faced some incredible teams. And... All right, 9-9. Nine, nine. Gomez breaking. Top spin. Still got the balls down, though. Oh, kiss he on got the, the kiss ball. on the cue ball. Made Not a couple bad, balls. Yeah, made like Oof. four balls wow. on the break. And a shot. And a good shot. Uh, At 9-9. Nine, nine. A little goofy elevated over the 10. Kind of like, oh, do I put the bridge behind it? Do I put the bridge in front of the 10? Mm -hmm. You know, that's the yes, awkward I do. one, right? Yes, I do. I know this one quite well. <laughs> I like just high ball coming above the four. I don't think you really need side spin looking at this angle. Especially not bridging over the 10. You want to just get this, no matter what, get the one ball down. So whatever way makes the one ball go down. Forget the position worries. Yep. Just cinch it. Now he's going to bounce perfectly here. And then now you deal with whatever it is you got to deal with. But get that one ball down. Yeah, I think even if the 10 wasn't there, straight high looked like the way to shoot it. Really perfect tempo. All right, don't try to get it out there. The angle is going to move the ball. Just that nice medium stroke.
You think the head comes up with Roberto because he knows yes. the tip's coming up? Uh, I mean, no, I know I it every time comes up a little bit slowly. But I, but I think that brings the tip up. I don't know. Well, he's definitely related, never, but. you know, a lot of times he's on the felt with the tip, right? So yeah. I don't know. But you see the head just slowly. It's not as bad as it used to be or not as much. I shouldn't label it bad. Um, he's in the tournament. I'm over here in the booth. But it's not as severe as it used to be. Mm-hmm. Well, definitely, some of his idiosyncrasies definitely hurt him consistency wise. But sometimes it helps him maybe to manufacture something that the other players can't get. But look at this break and run out he just made. Yeah, four on the break. He hit him 21.4 miles an hour, made four balls on the break. How many different Superman shirts can you own, by the way? <laughs> I think he has a lot. Yeah. He's Needs this 10 ball to go. Yeah. To go on the hill. A very nice break and run. Yeah, from to that heel that's been looming the for some time. 10 games to 9. Fedor Gors will be breaking. Four break and run outs in the set for Gomez. 20. I think, you know, Gomez getting on the hill there, nice out. And he's got to feel good about things, you know, hopefully forgetting about some things that have happened in the last hour that could have maybe ended this match. But at the same time, Gorse has got to feel pretty good about things as well. Yeah, he knowing, was down, what, three or four games at one point. Yeah, knowing that Roberto could have really finished him off, it seems like, or, or maybe had the deficit more like about 10-7 at the moment instead of 10-9. And he's really working the rack here with those three dry breaks in a row. Oh, and the last time that's happened to him with the template. He's dissatisfied. I haven't seen anyone struggle in the rack. Yeah, I love these racks, the outfield rack. Lends that neutrality. They rack up solid. Yeah, I've got a few of them at home. I do my practicing usually later at night after the kids have gone to bed and my work's done. So I don't break the balls very often because I don't want to wake anybody up. Yeah. You know, like, yeah. Which I doubt my break would wake up anybody anyways, but one time I was talking to Jasmine Ocean's coach and uh, I think his name was Michael Newman and we were talking about her break and how she's developed it and he said what he used to do because of all the racking, he bought a pillow and put a mark on it and then just had her break to the pillow and then he's not constantly re racking, but no. she can work on that long technique. Right. And he propped the target, you know, back against the back rail so it was even a longer shot type of a thing. Oh. It was kinda of interesting concept. I mean, you know yeah. was, But the idea of getting a bunch of reps in, that was kinda yeah. good. Oh, good transition there. Perfect hit on the one and what looks like another dry break. Oh boy. That'll make you want to take a little bite out of that carbon fiber. Was that four or five for high dry breaks? Four in a right? row. Yeah. I don't know about total. It may have been five for the match, but four in a row. So the three's going to get disturbed here. He's stretched. The way he'd like to shoot it is with a little inside English, but with the bridge. Whew, man, what a tough shot. Well, plus you're hitting that three ball pretty heavy here. He's yeah. Can he draw off the three? That would well, be better to take the little thin cut. Now, you have to make sure you draw it. That way you don't kind of float over behind the nine. <laughs> Gomez goes lefty on the bridge. It's the darndest thing I've ever seen. Oh, he put a lot of draw into it. He wanted to make sure the cue ball got freed up. And that the three ball got down table. Yeah, he's going to love that. The 
Let's see here. He's one kind of like, can he overcut this and get to the side rail, Mark? Otherwise, the uh, draw is a little funny. He may come above. I think above. he can roll. I think he can roll. He can. He may come above to the center. If this is touchy going in the side, he may come above like this. And I don't know if he got there or not. No. I thought he could cut that speed down. Oh, look, at he's trying to get it up there. <laughs> now, I, I liked his shot, to be honest with you. That way you make a nice connection on the two. You got a lot more room in the center than you think as long as you get past the eight. Mm -hmm. I didn't mind his play at all. Well, he got there in the event. But boy, it's a long time getting there. Well, and sometimes, you know, because of the situation, and you would like to think that's not the case, but sometimes because of the situation, uh, you getting to hit a ball with a little more pace makes you feel a heck of a lot better about things, you know? Hitting something touchy, 10-9. He's had a few of them get away from him already. Right, right. And he understands a lot of different shots, Roberto does. No question about that. He has all the tools. You won't be in this. He won't have won this in the past. He won it in 2018. Yeah, he's going to try and get the cue ball, I think, somewhere about where it's at now, or at least that line. All right, a little stun spin, maybe. Like that. Boy, you said right about where he was at. Yeah. <laughs> there you go, Jeremy. He got it right where it was at. Well, he's, he's not even close to out of the woods. And, and oh, this, no. is, this is the smart shot. Go ahead and stay above it, coming off two rails most likely, maybe one rail, and take the cut shot to try and win the match. One cut shot on the six to try and win the match. Yeah, I don't know if we can grab the overhead, but I think it's too thin. I think it's too thin to just lope out So here. two rails then? Yeah, two, two rails, rails back. Yeah, to yeah the, that's fine. Yeah. Yeah, whatever you feel on that, but make sure, you know, don't try to work the cue ball so much to get an easier shot on the six. You oh, know? it's just straight across and straight back. That's yeah, nothing this, more. Yeah, you're Roberto Gomez. And yeah. Just know, hey, I'm taking this shot to exactly. try and win the match. That That's the one that had the most consistency for pocketing the ball and the greatest likelihood to find this angle. And, you know, I don't know about Roberto and drills and stuff, but that is definitely another one of those shots with that center-ish tip to hold that straight line that if you do any kind of drills, that's definitely going to be in there somewhere. And yeah. it comes up in a big situation quite often. No, oh, all the time. Uh, yeah. When Similar I say all here, the time, huh? I mean every match, not every game, but yeah. every match you're going to need that shot. Similar here, right? Just a half a tip low coming back like that. Yeah, perfect. Oh, boy. Perfect. Or at least till perfect will It'll do till perfect comes along. <laughs> well, that was good, yeah. <laughs> I think Buddy Hall told me. I heard that one from Buddy Hall as well. <laughs> yeah, he's he's full of them. Yeah. He has to be the most fun guy. Yeah, you got your handful of guys you get most of your sayings from, whether it be your father being the main one, and then you go on to <laughs> yeah. the guys at the pool hall. Nick Varner, I got a lot from him. Shannon Dalton, of course. Jersey Red. And now Roberto Gomez to advance to the Final Four. And I'll tell you what, he can take a lot from this match, uh, gain a lot of confidence knowing that, hey, I played a pretty darn good match if I could just left a few of those little yeah. things behind, right? Here he's out from a tough rack, you know, and uh, a dry break, but he broke and ran four times too. Yeah. And he started breaking the ball so much better beginning of the rack the timing was definitely off and there you have it wow. superman takes down fetter gorst <laughs> that's something all right thank you for joining us uh, more great 10 ball coverage will be coming your way that's our time for this time so long for just a while